biggest IT conglomerates in Korea called Kakao. Um, uh, it boasts about $2 billion um, in assets deposited and over 100,000 active users, uh, although uh, more than 80% of them are Koreans. So uh, we can see a distinctive difference between uh, the crypto market in Korea in general and uh, the DeFi market in the country. We can see that uh, while Korean uh, crypto trading market, spot market accounts for about 10% of the global market, um, the DeFi market, uh, Korean DeFi volume accounts for just 3% of the global market. So what are the reasons for that? So first, um, as regulatory barriers uh, for institutions are high, uh, more than 90%, I would say 99% of Korean traders are individuals, not institutions. And as we know, uh, DeFi is a game of, game of uh, whales and institutions, most of all. Um, another reason is that due to regulations, Global companies have a lot of problems uh, serving the Korean customers uh, here, uh, especially with the new law that requires all companies, doesn't matter whether they are Korean or not, to register with the regulator here. And the third, I explained it earlier, Koreans do not use stable coins and stable coin is, is stable coins uh, are an, an important part of, of the DeFi ecosystems. However, directly or indirectly, Koreans, um, a small part of them, still do use DeFi services. And in many cases, uh, their participation is realized through the intermediaries. It might sound a little bit funny, but it is. Uh, digital intermediaries, I mean digital asset companies, digital asset management companies, which take their assets and uh, put them on DeFi protocols. If we look at the performance of the top three local asset management companies, we will see that Delio, our project, is dominating the market with more than 90% of a share, boasting $2 billion of total deposits and lending volume over the last year. And other ones, uh, Opfi and Sandbank, are operating much smaller amounts than that. Um, custodial services in Korea are currently being regulated by the financial, financial supervisory service and needs a registration, a license with the regulator. Delio is one of those that got the license. In fact, uh, there are only 42 companies in Korea licensed by the regulator and very few of them are custodial services and Delio is one of those. Um, well, if we look at their institutional participation, um, it's quite small uh, and uh, institutional investors in Korea cannot directly invest into cryptocurrencies and are still being very, very careful about investing in firms that deal with crypto. However, uh, a few positive examples of institutional participation uh, do, do exist and uh, I would like to highlight a few of them. One we already discussed is, in fact, is PlaySwap. Uh, the hands of everyday people. Institutional investors are getting engaged. A new Bitcoin wave of global so institutions are investing in Bitcoin and blockchain technology, while demand for cryptocurrencies has reached historic heights, forever changing the way we give to the causes we care about and how we exchange, earn, and spend. The future is decentralized. The world is moving forward. We're building new systems to increase the freedom of money for everyone. But it'll take all of us working together to push past the tipping point. 
We have a Binance Smart Chain that's finally released a $100 million fund for the Binance Smart Chain ecosystem community. I, I think that Bitcoin is the solution to 7.8 billion people's problems. They just don't know it yet. We can watch the world change, or we can change the world. Did you know you can earn passive interest on your digital assets? With Aave, you can lend and borrow cryptocurrencies through an easy, secure DeFi protocol. Lenders deposit tokens and receive an interest earning representation called A tokens. Deposit USDC and receive AUSDC. Deposit DAI and receive ADAI. You can withdraw your assets at any time. The interest earned on A tokens will vary based on market supply and demand. Deposits sit in a global liquidity market, meaning that when demand is high, interest rates increase. This all happens automatically, without having to actively manage or monitor your position. With Aave, you can take out a loan by depositing collateral to borrow any supported assets. Repay the loan, along with any incurred debt, to unlock your original deposit. With passive interest paid in real time, it's no wonder Aave has aggregated billions of dollars in deposits to date. Head over to Aave.com to get started today.
So the next speaker is directly from South Korea. Only at Synopsis Summit. Alex Smagin, Head of Strategy at Delio. Hi, Alex. Hello everyone, my name is Oleg Smagin. I'm head of strategy at Delio, Korea's largest crypto finance service provider. Uh, today I would like to give a brief introduction to the Korean crypto finance industry and specifically introduce the DeFi industry in Korea. Um, in the second part of my presentation, I would like to also um, introduce our project Delio and uh, try to explain how we are willing to contribute to the DeFi uh, development in South Korea. Um, well, that's not a secret that Korean market has been one of the biggest uh, in terms of both uh, trading volume and the number of users. It is also one of the most isolated in the world. Um, in fact, strict capital control rules prevent the funds from leaving Korea and um, foreign users have very limited access to Korean exchanges. However, if we look at the data, uh, specifically uh, the data of spot market, we can see that the accumulated trading volume on uh, top four exchanges equals uh, to about 10% of the global trading volume. Uh, relatively to the stock, to the local stock market in Korea, Korean crypto industry is extremely strong. Uh, for instance, uh, this uh, May 2021, uh, the daily tra trading volume on four top Korean exchanges um, peaked at $40 billion. Uh, this was about two times more than the trading volume at uh, the biggest stock exchange in Korea, KRX. In terms of the number of users, Korea is one of the leading markets in the world as well. Uh, 5 million unique users are trading cryptocurrency in Korea. Um, this is the number of unique users, people who have bought or sold uh, cryptocurrency at least once since the beginning of this year. Um, and this accounts for about 10% of the country's population. Uh, a broader survey shows that um, Two thirds of uh, this number of people are uh, youngsters in the 20s and 30s. One interesting detail is that both users uh, nearly do not use stable coins and trade their cryptos uh, in their national currency, Korean won. Um, not in small part because the Korean won is extremely um, safe and extremely stable. And uh, because the market, the trading market is isolated and there is no uh, regulatory clarity surrounding uh, the stable coins. Um, one more factor here is that um, the fiat uh, withdrawal fees in Korean exchanges are extremely small, um, less than $1. Uh, and it doesn't depend on how much you draw. So technically for those users who want to uh, transfer their fun funds from one exchange to another, it's easier to just withdraw it in cash and then put it to the other exchange. Uh, thanks to that, uh, Korean won is one of the most traded national currencies against Bitcoin. It's now in top four together with Japanese yen, um, euro and dollar. Another distinctive feature of Korean users is um, a high uh, trading volume of altcoins. Um, Bitcoin trading volume is, in Korea is in general quite small um, and on, on some days it goes below 10%. Uh, Korean traders are in general risk takers um, and um, they trade a lot of kimchi coins as well. Kimchi coins are those coins that are made in Korea and are traded solely on Korean exchanges. Um, if we uh, go to the DeFi market, uh, we can see that surprisingly South Korea, despite a very high level of overall crypto adoption is not uh, one of the leaders in DeFi. Uh, according to the uh, recent global DeFi adoption index, 
uh, Korea is lacking behind top DeFi markets, uh, mostly North American and Western European ones, um, in terms of on-chain DeFi activity. Um, one of the major Korean business uh, newspapers, uh, Mail Business, estimates the Korean DeFi market at about $3 billion, while uh, the global size currently is about $100 billion, so it would account for about 3% of the global market. Um, currently, the most notable uh, Korean DeFi project is uh, ClaySwap, um, made and developed by one of the biggest IT conglomerates in Korea called Kakao. Um, uh, it boasts about $2 billion um, in assets deposited and over 100,000 active users, uh, although uh, more than 80% of them are Koreans. So uh, we can see a distinctive difference between uh, the crypto market in Korea in general and uh, the DeFi market in the country. We can see that uh, while Korean uh, crypto trading market, spot market accounts for about 10% of the global market, um, the DeFi market, uh, Korean DeFi volume accounts for just 3% of the global market. So what are the reasons for that? So first, um, as regulatory barriers uh, for institutions are high, uh, more than 90%, I would say 99% of Korean traders are individuals, not institutions. And as we know, uh, DeFi is a game of, game of uh, whales and institutions, most of all. Um, another reason is that due to regulations, global companies have a lot of problems uh, serving the Korean customers. Uh, here, uh, especially with the new law that requires all companies, doesn't matter whether they are Korean or not, to register with the regulator here. And the third, I explained it earlier, Koreans do not use stable coins and stable coin is, is stable coins uh, are an, an important part of, of the DeFi ecosystems. However, directly or indirectly, Koreans, um, a small part of them, still do use DeFi services. And in many cases, uh, their participation is realized through the intermediaries. It might sound a little bit funny, but it is. Uh, digital intermediaries, I mean digital asset companies, digital asset management companies, which take their assets and uh, put them on DeFi protocols. If you look at the performance of the top three local asset management companies, we will see that Delio, our project, is dominating the market with more than 90% of a share, boasting $2 billion of total deposits and lending volume over the last year. And other ones, uh, Opfi and Sandbank, are operating much smaller amounts than that. Um, custodial services in Korea are currently being regulated by the financial, financial supervisory service and needs a registration, a license with the regulator. Delio is one of those that got the license. In fact, uh, there are only 42 companies in Korea licensed by the regulator and very few of them are custodial services and Delio is one of those. Um, well, if we look at their institutional participation, um, it's quite small uh, and uh, institutional investors in Korea cannot directly invest into cryptocurrencies and are still being very, very careful about investing in firms that deal with crypto. However, uh, a few positive examples of institutional participation uh, do, do exist and uh, I would like to highlight a few of them. One we already discussed is, in fact, is ClaySwap, uh, the, the decentralized exchange, which was developed by, as I said, Kakao, one of the biggest shareholders in Korea. Um, among other big uh, conglomerates, Hanhua is very active in the space. The asset management branch uh, has invested in a few blockchain startups and recently launched their own um, spin-off called Enterprise Blockchain. 
Um, and a new wave of entrants comes mostly from the financial uh, sector. This year, all four major banks in Korea have launched or declared the plan to launch a digital asset custody business. Um, as you can see here, uh, KDAC, Coda and Cardo have all been launched this year with Coda having the biggest amount of assets under management among them. All four banks are participating in a joint venture with local blockchain startups who provide all necessary infrastructure and expertise. Um, I would say the future of DeFi in Korea would largely depend on, the, on, on those kind of institutional investors. If regulations become clearly, we can predict that traditional institutions will join the booming market, uh, filling this gap between the level of adoption of crypto in general and DeFi. Well, that was it for um, the industry landscape. On this slide, the, the last slide, I would just like to briefly introduce our project, Delio, and speak uh, about how we see our future in this business. So first of all, Delio is committed to build an ecosystem that uh, where crypto investors will be able to realize the potential of their cryptos without saving them, them uh, generating passive income, getting asset-backed fiat loans, swapping uh, their assets and spending them uh, on digital, digital goods like NFT. Um, our solution currently is a hybrid centralized, decentralized finance model um, where we lend assets and we uh, provide yields to our customers. Delio is currently offering a variety of lending and interest saving products on, on our platform and we surpassed, surpassed uh, more than $1 billion of Bitcoin uh, volume, we uh, total value utilized for both uh, lending and, and deposit products. Uh, speaking of our future plans, uh, there are two new services we would uh, we are going to open um, by the end of this year. One is crypto-backed uh, fiat lending. This kind of service currently does not exist in Korea, and uh, we have already obtained a necessary banking license. We are going to open it soon. The other service uh, we are planning to launch is our own decentralized exchange called Delio Swap. So um, our users will be able to swap their tokens um, not without leaving our platform. Finally, we are thinking of um, launching a, an NFT platform next year to offer our users an opportunity to collect on items and create them as well. So this was my presentation for today. Very happy to get a chance to speak uh, on this forum and thanks for your attention. Imagine a lake with clear water and unpolluted air. Imagine a website with real news and no hidden, unlabeled, sponsored articles masquerading as real news. That place exists.
and it's called Be in Crypto. The first and only cryptocurrency news portal to provide complete transparency and honest news. Pure, relevant, informative. Are you in? I remind you guys that Synopsis is an international summit that the audience and speakers from all countries of the world take a part. So the next speakers connected to us directly from Japan, Naritaka Okabe, founder and CEO at GPYC. Greetings. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Okabe, the founder and the CEO at JPYC. Uh, we have issued Japanese yen stable coin, which is called JPYC, on the public chain. It is the uh, only ERC20 based stable coin issued in Japan, legally complying with the Payment Service Act. Now, uh, JPYC is on public chains like Ethereum, Polygon, and XDAI. We are planning to put JPYC on more public chains to make it a multi chain stable coin in the future. As you know, uh, cryptocurrency started from a single point, Bitcoin. And after that, the world started to find more and more utilities of blockchain technology. And now it is known as Money Lego, like DeFi, NFT, and a variety of smart contract ecosystems. We have already witnessed the huge growth of DeFi and NFT in the crypto market. I think everyone here would agree with me about the huge potential and the bright future of it. Now, one issue of the crypto market is we need more than just speculation. In my opinion, we will see more and more utilities of stable coin in real life, rather than just speculations of the cryptocurrencies. And this will finally lead us to the mass adoption of cryptocurrency. In fact, now the market cap of cryptocurrency is around $2 trillion. On the other hand, stablecoin is around $130 billion, about 6.5% uh, of the total market cap belongs to stablecoin. I think the market share of stablecoin will increase in the future. Uh, because of the, the advantages of blockchain, for example, the reduction of payment fee, trustlessness, and permissionless attributes, it became a more open and fair platform we have never seen before. I have there is no doubt that it will grow into something great in the future. According to JBCEA, an association of crypt in Japan, 3% of the Japanese population has created an account in Japan, Japan's exchanges. We think uh, the number of crypt users will increase expense potentially from here. And uh, now the main reason people buy cryptocurrency should be speculation, but things may change as more and more people adopt cryptocurrency as a payment method in daily life. Like how smartphones have dominated Japan, Japanese society, a stable coin can do the same thing and that is the potential of the stable coin in Japan. Uh, so what is our solution? Uh, we created JPYC as an ERC-20 stable coin, 
because we want to make a bridge between the crypto world and the real world. Our goal is to make real life payment by JPYC easily. Now, JPYC is on Ethereum, Polygon, and XI. And we will support more public chains to make JPYC a multi chain stable coin. JPYC is being used in the crypto world like DeFi, NFT, etc. At the same time, users can convert their JPYC into a prepaid gift card or pay hometown taxes in Japan or do some other real life things. A lot of users have used JPYC and they are very excited about it, like our team. Now, we have issued $2 million worth of JPYC over the nine months since the release. Actually, a lot of investors have con contacted us and they showed huge investment interest, huge interest in investing in our project. JPYC is the only ERC-based stablecoin issued in Japan legally complying with the Payment Service Act. Uh, we are trying our best to expand our current X system, bridging the real world and the crypt world seamlessly. Thank you very much. We help fund, build, and localize tech startups in the world's most promising regions. Cinefy is a one-stop solution for tech companies trying to make sense of China and Southeast Asia. Check out more at cinefy.group. Bears and bulls are the two driving forces of the crypto market, depending on who buys and who sells. The bear is superpower is to make money even when the market is down. Their strategy is selling short and provoking a supply increase. The bull, the whole bull's life is dealings for a rise. His main goal is a growing market. Bull is optimistic and pluckily beats first. The confrontation of bulls and bears lasts forever and as its price depends on who leads the fight. speaker is representative of one of the fastly growing project of this year, the Rassity. So, Mariam Mahup, CMO at Rassity. Mariam, the word.
Hi, my name is Miriam, and I'm here to speak about veracity and how we really want to bring uh, mainstream adoption of blockchain, you know, beyond what we've achieved so far, of course, uh, within esports and by leveraging esports uh, and the advertising technology. You know, we're seeing great gains across so many industries, whether it be uh, banking, you know, government institutions or uh, supply chain management. But where we really saw an exciting fit was uh, ad tech, um, over 40% of all video ad views are fraudulent, meaning I as a marketer would lose 40% of my budget just uh, automatically uh, e to bots and fraud. And so uh, we thought, you know, let's take a blockchain and resolve that issue. And then we saw an opportunity within esports where we saw the great way to take blockchain and really make it an everyday technology for uh, people and to get them onboarded using crypto, uh, leveraging blockchain uh, within their existing lives. Uh, and we found that really exciting. So that's what we'll discuss today. So a little bit about me. I come with about 20 years of marketing experience, uh, working really heavily in the tech space, especially health technology. He, I got into blockchain as a career choice about three years ago. I joined with Consensus. From there, I moved over to the Cardano Foundation. And May of this year, I joined Veracity. And that was really because of Mark, the CEO's vision of coming from the SaaS space. You know, we were always looking at what are some real world problems to fix? And the technology we built was always for actual issues uh, in uh, the space. And when I got into blockchain, it sometimes felt like, you know, certain projects were really just trying to be on the blockchain because blockchain technology is really exciting and cool, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. And it wasn't really solving any actual issues. So, you know, uh, Mark, having far more experience than I, has been in the tech space, uh, working as an entrepreneur since the 90s. And he's been in the video ad fraud space, uh, well, ad fraud space uh, for a very long time and saw the immutability and the transparency that blockchain offers as a great solution to you know, the challenges that marketers and ad tech companies face. And from there, uh, you know, we've kind of evolved into the esports world and we're seeing more and more opportunities as we expand. And we'll get into those details as we uh, move ahead. So, what we're going to be covering on this keynote, of course, I have to do with the shameless plug of Veracity, who we are and what we do. We're going to look at the current state of blockchain gaming and uh, what that means today, what the data says. And then we're going to compare that to esports uh, and look at what the adoption numbers are there. Then we're going to talk about why we feel it makes far more sense to take blockchain into an already existing, vibrant, and uh, well established industry to gain mass adoption rather than trying to rebuild gaming on the blockchain. We'll showcase how we plan on doing so and how we have been doing so with Esports Fight Club. And then we'll talk about how blockchain uh, technology can really solve the user experience issues that every player within the ecosystem experiences. And with that, let's get this party started. We'll talk a little bit uh, about us and the various products that we offer both across uh, the consumer and B2B side of things. We were established in 2017 and launched our proprietary video ad play, uh, our video player uh, in Q1 of 2018. Since then, we've been audited by Zangle, which is the only crypto auditing firm that's accepted by Korean banks with a grade of A. And this is really important for us, not just because of how big crypto is uh, in Korea, but how big esports is as well. We currently have over 210,000 bear wallet holders and 38,000 wallet holders across 24 exchanges, 
with a fully diluted market cap of 400 million. And we've been awarded two patents for our proof of view technology, which is designed to eliminate fraud in video advertising and NFTs. And we've also started expanding that to other industries, but our main focus right now, of course, is video advertising and esports. So our consumer products, we have Esports Fight Club, which is our digital platform where we host tournaments uh, and esports events, you know, some of them having over 10 million users. We have our Vera Player, which is built into Esports Fight Club, uh, where consumers can go and watch their content. And of course, we have our wallet, which is a cold storage wallet. We really built it for security. And we actually guarantee against any malicious attacks and replace, will replace the crypto lost uh, due to, to uh, any attack. And we've yet to do, have to do so yet. And we offer 25.5% staking rewards. So this will really play into how we plan on getting esports audiences excited about crypto. On the flip side of things, we have our B2B space where we have our patented proof of view technology. And this is really both seamless and elegant technology. We have over 200 touch points and we use AI to authenticate views, making sure it is an actual human viewing the content. Uh, not a bot. Um, we're now building out an end-to-end -end ad stack for video ads. And of course, the hub of this will be a proof of view technology. And we also have a veracity reward system where advertisers and content creators can actually reward their viewers with crypto and that seamlessly integrates with our wallet and player. So what does this all add, all add up to? We're essentially a blockchain company and we're looking to create an entirely new experience across esports, ad tech and digital rights management, which is our NFT space. And with that, let's move on to blockchain gaming and look at the numbers uh, there. Blockchain gaming uh, launched with the uh, crypto kitties that came out in 2017. And since then, uh, the numbers have been growing and the percentage of growth uh, has been especially significant over this past little while. But uh, when we look at it across uh, all crypto users, those numbers are still kind of uh, staggering. Uh, staggering. There were 350,000 players on blockchain games in June of 2021, according to DAP Radar, and over 70 million uh, crypto wallet holders. So that barely makes half a percent uh, of all crypto holders uh, playing any blockchain games. So, so why hasn't that really caught on uh, to date, you know, despite being out for uh, close to four years now? One challenge is uh, speed, uh, you know, just getting on the blockchain, uh, we can all attest to, isn't always that easy. The entry fees for participation and the transaction fees that are included. Um, watching esports is free, you know, all you have to do is get onto YouTube, uh, Twitch, and of course, uh, Esports Fight Club. Uh, to watch content, uh, to play, or to launch your own tournaments. The user experience and game design of blockchain games really cannot compare to uh, existing uh, esports or variety games. You know, these games have uh, been built out with a lot of money going behind UX alone. And to catch up to that will take a lot of evolution in the blockchain technology and then the uh, expansion of the UX team on these blockchain games as well. So uh, to catch up will take a significant amount of time. And then the last part is uh, participation is mainly peer to peer. You know, when you compare it to esports where they have stadiums full of uh, people watching uh, tournaments or you're playing a variety of games, you know, with people all around the world, it uh, doesn't quite compare. Now, when we look at uh, esports uh, in comparison 
There were over 650 million players in 2020 and 618 million viewers. So that just blows crypto holders out of the water, let alone uh, blockchain gamers. And of course, uh, like crypto, uh, COVID has been very good for the industry, uh, increasing participation uh, by 21% uh, over 2019 for viewership. The industry is expected to be 1.8 billion by 2022. And the majority of that, close to 70%, comes from sponsorships and advertising. And then the rest comes from ticket sales, merchandise, and in-game apps uh, and sales. Now, if we start looking at esports players and the crypto uh, community, we start to see a lot of commonalities. Uh, predominantly male, relatively the same age, between 29 to 34 years old, and very heavily focused uh, in Southeast uh, Asia for both industries. Now, what's really exciting is 52% uh, of crypto holders consider uh, crypto as a source of income for them. So once we start talking about watch and earn, well, if you're earning crypto, doing what you love, watching esports, well, uh, you know, that makes it uh, all the more better. And more than half of viewers watch esports uh, at least once a month. So... Uh, uh, you're going to get return uh, consumers coming in and earning that crypto and uh, engaging with technology and content that is designed to drive them to become uh, crypto holders, NFT uh, holders, uh, and so on. And uh, with... Uh, an expectation of hitting 1 billion views by 2025. That is a huge market for the blockchain community to be able to tap into. So for us, the opportunity was really clear. What we want to do is increase adoption by making the accessibility and understanding of crypto far easier for an already engaged and digitally native audience. Essentially, rather than uh, bringing gaming onto the blockchain, we're bringing the blockchain to gamers. And that's what we mean by improving the wheel. We don't want to reinvent it. We want to make the existing communities better by bringing them together. And the three ways we're going to be doing that, of course, NFTs, both in and out of game uh, opportunities are huge. And we're already seeing that. We're seeing a lot of big uh, names in gaming uh, start looking at uh, NFTs closely and feeling far more comfortable uh, joining within the crypto and blockchain space. We have our watch and earn technology where viewers can earn crypto simply for watching content that they already enjoy. And that really reduces the barrier to entry into crypto because you're not investing your own money. There's no risk involved. You're doing what you always do and you know, you're getting something new out of it. Uh, similar to like using your credit card with its loyalty points so you can travel. And then with proof of view, sponsorship opportunities uh, become far better because one, you're not going into a stadium or, or an event space where tracking engagement is very challenging to begin with. But uh, even for digital content, you're ensuring that all of those views are made by humans and every dollar you're spending is going to an effective marketing spend. You're not just tossing 40% of your budget uh, towards bots. And so let's talk about Esports Fight Club and how we've really established uh, our proof of concept to become a standalone brand. Um, uh, it's revenue generating, you're partnering with some of the biggest game, uh, names in gaming uh, and esports, and it's really exciting for us uh, and for consumers. Um, they can go on to Esports Fight Club and create tournaments, play them to win uh, prizes. You know, some of these prize packs start at $100 and they can go up to 90,000, 100,000, depending on what the tournament is. So, 
And then you are also earning just by watching the content. So, so everyone, regardless of how involved they want to be or uh, how they want to engage with esports, gets a really exciting experience and gets to earn something out of it. This was an ad reel for one of our latest tournaments with Valorant, where you know viewers were able to watch and earn, and we received over 500,000 uh, users of our watch and earn technology since launching in late June of this year. So uh, it's definitely been quite popular across uh, any esports enthusiasts that we've come across. So some of the partnerships and the numbers behind them that we've had uh, just uh, over the summer, we partnered with uh, PUBG Mobile and uh, Esports Fight Club uh, to stream Pro League season four. And that held over 832,000 views across all platforms um, and generated over 31 million hours watched across 423 hours of airtime. So these games uh, really cannot compare to uh, all blockchain games combined, let alone any single uh, blockchain game. Uh, and so we really want to be able to to push our narrative and our love for crypto and blockchain to uh, this audience. And same with Valorant, our Val uh, Valorant Challenger Tournament of 2021. It was an uh, invite only the event with Southeast Asia uh, players uh, and teams for stage three of the tournament and playoffs. There were over 109,000 views across all streaming platforms, uh, 2.5 million hours watched across 261 uh, hours of airtime. And so we're really trying to build a 360 degree ecosystem where everyone gets that better experience. You know, consumers are getting uh, rewards and earning crypto for watching uh, content that they already have been, you know, imagine uh, letting 600 million or 618 million uh, viewers know that you could be earning real money, uh, you know, uh, and on top of that, 25% staking uh, with watching content that you're already enjoying. And then from that, they can use uh, their rewards to purchase NFTs, hardware, gift cards, or keep it and keep on earning uh, those staking rewards. And then content creators and influencers that are a huge part of esports, they get an incentivized audience that's going to engage more often to earn that uh, to earn those rewards, and that in turn helps them generate more revenue because they earn based off of how much uh, people are streaming their content and the advertising that goes with that. And then sponsors and advertisers have an easier point of entry. One, the cost uh, of filling up uh, a stadium and uh, sponsoring a, a full event is very high. And then tracking that is in terms of uh, engagement and success is quite difficult. And so, you know, smaller players can come in and advertise uh, on our platforms uh, and then make sure that, uh, like I said, every dollar that they're spending is actually going towards an effective marketing strategy. Uh, I can't stress this enough, thinking 40% of my budget is lost every time I put out a video ad. Well, myself as an advertiser, I'm, for one, going to spend a lot less on production because half of the uh, views are not even real. Uh, and two, 
uh, I have to explain to my bosses and you know to my stakeholders and shareholders why my engagement numbers are one percent or two percent, and that's actually really high. You know, uh, if we can cut down on all this fraudulent activity and uh, uh, all this uh, uh, fake, all these fake numbers and really see what we're achieving, we can create better content, we can create more engaging content, and we can really track how successful we are uh, with our marketing plans. And we've got a short little video just to sort of highlight how this all fits in together or within the Veracity ecosystem. Uh, I did my bachelor's degree in psychology where we talked a lot about Gestalt theory, where the whole is greater than the sum of uh, all its parts. And because I love food, I thought, you know, ice cream sandwich uh, is the perfect comparison. You know, cookies are delicious on their own. Ice cream is delicious on their own. And when you put them together, you just have a whole new uh, delicious experience. And that's what we want to be across ad tech and esports by leveraging blockchain technology. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed uh, the talk today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email or on Twitter. And our website is veracitywithans.io. Thanks very much. So the next speaker is a representative from NFT Marketplace, Jerry. Uh, he will continue this sensational topic associated with NFT and digital art. Meet Mohamed Karim, co-founder and CFO at Curate. Hi everyone, my name is Mohamed Karam Ghani and I am the Chief Operations Officer at Curate, which is a gasless NFT marketplace with a one of a kind one tap minting feature. I've also served as an advisor for many blockchain companies and has, have assisted small and large technology led businesses to take advantages of the benefits 
of blockchain technology in their business, specializing in business development and blockchain solution architecture. I've always had a passion for the digital world and to finding solutions to everything. So today I'd like to turn my head to something that's quite a hot topic, which is the metaverse. In July, as many of you may have heard, Mark Zuckerberg declared Facebook the future of the metaverse. According to experts, the future of the metaverse will not be defined by one individual, but rather by many. Now, that's a really interesting piece of information as it places those in the NFT space, such as Curate, into a unique position to actually help define what and how the metaverse would be and it will evolve over time. The metaverse will be a cognitive shared virtual space for those of you that don't know about it and can be roamed digitally and can lead to being the successor to the internet for all the digital media and commerce. Today, I'd like to discuss with you the signs that this movement is already underway, the parties transforming it in the blockchain space and the potential that it holds for the future. Looking at what the signs are that the internet 3D universe could be the internet of tomorrow, we turn our eyes to the pandemic and how it accelerated our dependence on the internet as companies looked to engage its audiences more digitally and innovative companies began to create these sort of digital playgrounds as it's been dubbed to allow fans to socialize and shop in new immersive environments. These metaverses really helped individuals stay connected during lockdown. And as the metaverse matures in the future, it's gonna mature with, the, with NFTs as the backbone of this technology. It'll even unlock even greater potential and experiences for collaboration and commerce. While the metaverse's full potential will not be realized for some time to come, as NFTs and virtual worlds continue to develop, it'll shape the way we interact and socialize as a consumer with NFTs morphing into verifiable digital ownership of popular consumer goods and digital cosmetics. Major brands are already starting to establish dedicated metaverse teams, similar to how we've seen companies that have established dedicated social media teams to forego the risk of falling behind, as many of you are familiar with the relatively fast pace of this crypto world. It's really gaming that takes my attention here when it comes to metaverses, as they're really forging the way ahead in this. And if we turn our head to games like Second Life, which have been around for a long time, we can see the players as the first users of the metaverse to not only build worlds, but also creating marketplaces for cosmetic skins and cars. Now imagine an ecosystem powered by NFTs that allows these items to be taken off platform and uniform across different games. This is made possible by blockchain technology. And not only that, but players will be able to take advantage of this massive revenue being generated in game items and trade them on NFT marketplaces. Companies are already starting to invest heavily in building this world and making NFT marketplaces easy and accessible is what Curate is looking to build to facilitate the trading of these NFTs without any of the drawbacks of blockchain or without compromising on any of the benefits that come with it. Approximately around 80% of Gen Z play video games and these individuals have spent over 10.5 million years combined. I mean, that's crazy to think about just how major that is. And obviously this is translating into massive revenue and we're starting to see brands get on board with this. Wearables in-game is seriously taking off and we're starting to see a growing interest in taking this off platform and showing it off to their friends. NFTs would allow gamers to maintain the uniqueness of cosmetics in-game and outside of games. For example, if your famous streamer, favorite streamer got shot in the left shoulder of their t-shirt in a game of Fortnite, this shirt, this exact shirt could hypothetically be sold as an NFT to a fan who watched the stream. And anytime he participated in the game or wished to sell it off in the se secondary market, it will be easily identifiable with the blockchain that it is indeed authentic. Not only that, but it can be customized that when he wears it in game, that exact bullet hole is there. And we can even simulate wear and tear by use of smart contracts. Similar to how we need to identify authentic from non-authentic in the real world, as more time is spent online, this need is going to transpire online as well. There's a race that's kind of developing at the moment is that these things with these bags that people want to be out and about and wear these cosmetics and consumables. The big question is, where can you use these assets? Now today, maybe not many places, but major companies like Epic Games and Roblox want to get you to purchase their cosmetics to use in their respective worlds. But obviously when it comes to these larger decentralized worlds, there's a standardized format powered by blockchain and NFTs 
that allow users to take these assets and use them across different programs and applications that follow the similar standard. For example, artifacts like sneakers would essentially allow you to export it from Decentraland and use it as a Snapchat filter, whereas something like in Fortnite would remain exclusive to Fortnite until they expand to these formats, which might I say is already under development and R&D. It's used to think that users are already paying more for digital goods than the actual physical piece. While many luxury brands have started experimenting with NFTs recently, we start to see the rise of dedicated luxury marketplaces. A piece of Unreal Edge really summed it up nicely, saying that the, the hype machine that's powered streetwear has moved to the metaverse. Instead of kids lining up outside stores, kids are queuing to get into virtual worlds in Decentraland. The metaverse is really entering into the world, the product right now. And in the next couple of years, we'll start to see a lot more decentralized commerce or de-commerce for short. There's a company out there called Curate, which finally I'm a part of, which is a particularly interesting looking at it from an outside perspective, as we are paving the way in launching physical products in digital worlds as the first metaverse commerce brand, exploring the capabilities between IRL and URL environments which aims to partner with major brands to catapult our development. Expect to see a virtual shop somewhere in Decentraland in the future, sporting some of that amazing curate gear. We're also seeing Shopify allowing the sale of NFTs on its platform, seeing the Chicago Bulls being the first to offer NFTs for sale. In a short time, the interest into NFTs has really skyrocketed as most of you may have recognized. And month on month, we are seeing it grow exponentially, which is truly phenomenal. Republic Realm is a digital estate developer that was powered something called MetaJuku into Decentraland, which is described as being the first virtual mall, and their brand can actually operate stores in the mall, pay their rent while offering customers the ability to purchase virtual goods, essentially. Meanwhile, the Korea Korean credit card company, Shinhan Card, has offered a prepaid card to be used across IRL and URL environments. They've also built a path in the metaverse for events and experiences where the card can be used. With the power of Web 3.0, this has enabled the possibility for users to spend directly from popular wallets such as MetaMask and Coinbase Wallet, a sort of digital payments identity for consumers across the metaverse that can be spent in a multitude of sites that support the capability. Fashion retailers are also looking and anticipating the future in which AI can play a practical and long-term role, increasing consumer engagement and loyalty. In theory, you could have a digital avatar in a digital world that matches your dimensions. And, and to take this one step further, there's no reason why your digital avatar cannot try on that garment. And you could even get a third person view and see what it looks like if it were on. And this would match an actual item in real life. And if you were to like it, it would be as simple as a tap of a button to order it. I mean, these bizarre item and avatar outputs allow consumers really a little bit of self-expression on social media, and it has that cloud store. Post Nobriety found that 67% of its readers believe that digital clothing allows them to experience the with fashion. And I think that it's completely true, true, even though there are restrictions in both tech and real life. It's truly about working within those limits to find that absolute baseline that finds how we can merge the IRL and URL environments. Taking a look at what I feel is next for this space, I'm really interested to see how companies will be able to drive representation with virtual avatars. Through these, through these characters and digital twins, we'll be able to express ourselves in infinite ways. And for that, we're going to need skins and characters bases that is truly representative of every user's ability and identity. We can turn our head to a couple of companies that are quite innovative in the space. One that's creating a gender non-conforming avatar assets or Avon, who is another innovative company that is creating a skin, a range of avatars representing a variety of skin tones, hairstyles and accessories. I mean, that's crazy to think that we're actually going this in depth with avatars. All these developments will actually ensure inclusivity and drive empathy. And it's true that the metaverse will be able to create preferred futures for us all and drive authentic connections. Truly something that sounds like a utopia and I can't wait to see what the space has in store for us. Thank you.
The summit continues with us, Patrick Carey, co-founder and CEO at Fear.io. Hey, Patrick. So hi everyone, I'm Patrick, one of the co-founders of FIA. I'm really happy to be here today with Synopsis 2021. Uh, very privileged to be invited here to speak to you guys and introduce my project to tell you a little bit about us. So today I'm just gonna cover four things about the project that me and my brother founded. I'm gonna go over where we came from. So where did FIA come from? Uh, I'm then gonna go over the current trends in the market and how fear fits in there so what we're going to deliver to you globally with those trends i'm going to discuss play to earn and nfts and then finally i'm going to go over how we differ from our competitors because there's a lot of play to earn projects out there at the moment and uh, it can be difficult to find interesting ones or to actually just know how many games differ from each other because a lot seem similar so just taking you briefly through where we started. Two decades ago, me and my twin brother, we started our own gaming portal company. We ran over 300 gaming portals online. We hosted a series of casual games in those portals. And through that, we were able to get a good glimpse into the casual gaming market. Uh, moving on from the casual gaming market, in 2015, we launched our own Wacket series in the game casual gaming industry. The Wacket series was a uh, adult based uh, violent horror game series, and it had quite a dark sense of humor. Uh, we kind of launched it because it's really what we wanted to push out. So um, something that shocked the gaming community, something that made them laugh, something that just was really easy going. Uh, that series kind of took off. We ended up with a total of 300 million views, interactions and plays. And from there, we also developed quite a cult following in terms of our fans as well. Uh, through that cult following, we developed quite a intimate relationship with our fans. We had a lot of feedback from them. And that kind of gave us the idea of allowing our fans and gamers to earn and own a bit more of our games. So to have more of a stake in our games. Um, alongside that kind of uh, want from me and my brother, Along came blockchain and blockchain gaming. It seemed like a very natural fit for what we we're trying to do. So that's where fear came from. Fear comes from the idea that we had this dark, humorous horror series. We have this great relationship with our gamers. And how can we fuse the two together to give them more of a stake in our game and more of a stake in what we're trying to uh, do with our games? So let me ask the question, what will FIA deliver to gamers globally uh, and our fans globally over the coming years to come. Uh, first of all, there's over 3.2 billion people on this planet that all play games. So that's, I mean, it's quite baffling, but that's over 50% of the world's population right now playing games. Not of them right this minute, but you know, the sun goes down, the moon comes up, vice versa. People are playing games 24-7. And with that, in the past, you've never quite been able to own those games or earn in those games. You played them, you experienced them, and you, you were entertained by them. But you never got anything quite out of it playing those games. Uh, you never really had a stake in the games. You never were paid for your time. Uh, so where FIA comes in right now is we're going to launch into the horror blockchain gaming space. We're going to allow you, through our games, to play to earn own NFTs, own part of those games. Um, and we're looking to do that in the funnest way possible. So we're not looking to offer strategy or casual games that are turn-based. We're actually looking to shock, scare you, uh, and bring you closer to our games and allow you to own them and earn while playing those games. So ownership and earning is what I want to talk about now because that's where the play to earn and NFT trends come in. So back to what I was discussing before. So the play to earn and NFT trend, it's come about in the last couple of years. And that trend is all about uh, not necessarily spending your time playing entertaining games and enjoying them, being shocked by them, 
but not really getting anything else out of them. So a lot of people spend large amounts of their time uh, playing games um, and sure they're entertained by them, but they're not actually earning anything or they're not getting anything out of those games. So play to earn came along the idea that you could be paid and as part of playing those games, you're actually getting paid for the time and effort that you put into those games. So alongside enjoying them, you're actually getting uh, potentially uh, a wage out of or some kind of rewards back from that game. Not just the a token or a cryptocurrency, which some games offer, but you can also buy our own NFTs and those NFTs are real parts of the game, the real content in the game. And that's another level of ownership being brought about by NFTs. The idea that you can spend a lot of your time farming or on a quest in a game and potentially can be rewarded with unique or exclusive parts of that uh, game. So fear brings itself into that area in terms of horror gaming. And what we pride ourselves on is that a lot of games in the blockchain space now, they tend to start with the blockchain aspect and build the game around that. So what I mean by that is they will have the tech uh, on the blockchain side for ownership and earning. And they were trying to develop a game that fits that kind of layer or that kind of technology. And they will build a game around that. Uh, we take that and turn it upside down. So what we try to do is we find an existing game. Uh, for example, we've got a game coming out called Araya that's already been played before, a massive horror game. Uh, where it's a storyline based game with jump scares and we will try to find the most appropriate way to bring blockchain into that game. So we hope and we think that through that we will attract more gamers because they're playing a game that they actually enjoy to start off with but with the added benefit of play to earn an NFT ownership. So we always say in our team that gaming comes first and crypto comes second. Uh, sometimes that can mean that you spend a large amount of your time working around that because it's not the most blockchain compatible, but we think the effort will pay off uh, once we deliver those games in a seamless fashion. So alongside that as well, I just also want to comment that as part of our project, we look to not just kind of give you rewards through NFTs and earnings, but we also want to shock you and scare you as well. So. We've been doing this before blockchain was around and we're not going to change it now just because we're on the blockchain. We're going to continue to try and bring those kind of games and bring them alive. If we can make you scared, uh, make you jump, and we can also bring in NFTs of play to work, then I think we're ahead of the market in that respect. Um, so the last part of, my, of what I want to talk to you about here is how we differ from our competitors. Now, I think I've touched on this already in a roundabout way, uh, because I've said that we put gaming first and blockchain second, but maybe I can give you a specific example. I mentioned the Raya before, which is a story-based game. How that's gonna pan out is you will play through a hospital and you are playing as a girl who's being chased by a kind of uh, a entity that you don't know what it is. And that entity is trying to hunt you down and kill you and you have to make it out of the hospital alive. Now, this isn't a kind of game that you can imagine uh, play to earn uh, being experienced in, uh, but as you progress through that game, you'll be rewarded in fear as long as you don't die. So there's a chance in the game that you won't be rewarded, but on top of that, you may find that the game ends or that there's some kind of fee in order to continue. So that's just a great example of how we're doing it very different with our games uh, to our competitors. Um, don't really have anything else to say now, I think. Um, what's that, Jen? Oh, for, for the future. No. I'm not being told what to say, honestly, just to give me a few notes. <laughs> so I just want to talk about what's coming up for fear in the future, what we've got coming up in the uh, next few weeks as well. Uh, coming out within the next week or so, we've got fucking hell. This is going to be our first play to earn offering where you're actually being hunted down by zombie chickens and you've got to defend your farm. And it has a Araya-esque type play to a model in that however far you get in the game, your chances of earning extra fear are rewarded. So every uh, round you make, uh, you enter further into the game, you progressively earn more and more fear. So that's coming out very soon. Uh, and 
along with that, straight uh, off the heels of fucking hell, we have a Raya. So I've mentioned what a Raya is already. We're looking to introduce a Raya to the market towards the end of October. Uh, it has been pushed back a little bit, but that just feeds back into what I was saying before, because we do things very differently to other gaming projects. It does mean that extra time and care has to be spent with the in-game economy and how the game works with the blockchain. Looking beyond the Raya, we have uh, what is my most, uh, in my mind, is the most exciting thing we're looking to bring out. It's partly my creation, and it's the kind of idea that could run away with itself. We've got the Fear Museum. Uh, there's all sorts of ways I could describe this museum, uh, but I really don't want to confuse people watching this uh, presentation. So I'll just say it's a VR horror experience where you can browse a very scary mansion uh, while have been afforded the opportunity to buy NFTs. Um, on top of that, this museum is going to be the focal point of our uh, ecosystem. So what I mean by that is any kind of game you want to get in on the fee of blockchain, if you want to play a Raya or fucking hell, if you want to buy the NFTs, you're going to have to go into this museum, I'm sorry to say, and potentially you may die in the museum, you may be scared, uh, all the while, you're going to be spending your lovely fee rewards on unique in-game NFTs. Uh, so this museum is going to be the lifeblood of the fear ecosystem for years to come. And uh, we've got some shocking ideas to put into this museum. So that's also coming out end of October. Briefly looking past October, we've got uh, numerous talks with several uh, medium-sized gaming companies. I know you hear this all the time in a blockchain space about potential partnerships, but these talks have been going on for uh, many months now. We're going to continue to introduce interesting games into the uh, into the blockchain. So that is what we're going to be sticking at. And some of these games, they are not your typical play to earn games, but again, they will be just as entertaining as a game as they will their earning and uh, their earning and their NFT aspect. So uh, wrapping things up, um, I just want to thank everyone who's invested in Fear so far or the potential. New investors, you're all welcome in the Fear family. We are very active on Telegram as founders, and our team also is. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. So thanks a lot. Current revenue generating methods don't allow publishers and businesses to offer an enjoyable ad-free browsing experience. We need a new solution that brings everything together to benefit businesses and users alike. That's why we made Gather. Gather is a blockchain-based network that improves the online experience for users, generates additional revenue for publishers, reduces cloud computing costs for enterprises, and makes running a proof-of-work blockchain easier. Instead of spamming users with ads to generate revenue, Gather runs in the background of your site and with each user's consent, aggregates their idle processing power. Then it distributes said power to enterprises for cloud computing and to developers for cryptocurrency mining. Publishers receive payment in cryptocurrency or fiat, users get to enjoy an ad-free browsing experience, and developers deploy their secure blockchains without the need to find new miners. 
Ultimately, it's a virtuous cycle that radically changes digital monetization and revenue generation to provide a superior experience for the end user. Join Gather today to be a part of the future. And next, we are waiting for the performance of Ayman Sayed, co-founder and chief business officer at Zam.io. Ayman, hello. Hello guys, uh, my name is Ayman Sayed. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Zamayo. Today we're gonna be talking about how we're bridging real world capital with the new decentralized economy. Uh, our project Zamayo, what we wanna do, uh, what's, uh, what's going on in the uh, crypto market uh, and what we're planning to do in the upcoming few years. So we're Zamayo uh, by our company Zamzam. We started in 2018 as an idea to have a bank on blockchain. Unfortunately, back then, uh, it was the start of quint quint uh, crypto winter. Uh, the markets were falling, collapsing. So it wasn't the ideal time uh, to enter the market. So uh, before revisiting our idea to build a bank on blockchain, we wanted to work on something more understandable, uh, something that we can build our competency, we can build our team, and then revisit our idea to build a bank on blockchain uh, at uh, the next uh, bull run. So uh, 2019, we started working on our first product, which was remittance from Russia to the CIS countries. So we wanted to have remittance for migrants. 2020 was the launch of our uh, first product, uh, which was a traditional, understandable remittance business. Beginning of this year, we were ready to revisit our original idea. Why do we want to build a bank on blockchain? We understand that the future of banking, the future of finance, basically the future economy is on chain. But we need a way to bridge today's economy with the economy of the future. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that with uh, our ecosystem, with a, a product that tailors to everyone from institutional investors to retail investors to traders, all the way to newcomers. Today, uh, capital uh, is with investors, particularly investors who are in the stock market. The stock market today is over $95 trillion. So if we believe that the future, uh, uh, future of investment, the future of finance, the future of banking, uh, tomorrow's economy is on chain, we need to bridge capital, we need to bridge investors uh, uh, to the new economy. If we can achieve that mission, we'll have regular users joining in, and then we'll have adoption. So we're Zamayo, bridging real capital with the new decentralized economy. Today, the world is witnessing a fast transformation into a more sustainable decentralized economy based on blockchain. So with the proliferation of mobile devices in IoT, FinTech start startups have been democratizing investments for the masses by putting financial instruments in the palms of users. Today, blockchain solves fintech inefficiencies by bringing a permissionless, global, and truly decentralized model to the industry. Cryptocurrency is the pinnacle, uh, is the evolution of money that starts with barter, move to gold, coin, paper money, plastic card, electronic money, and now we have crypto. So for those who don't know what DeFi is, DeFi, which stands for decentralized finance, aims to replicate financial services on chain without the need uh, or control of a central authority. So that allows anyone with a mobile device and an internet connection to have access to these tools anytime, anywhere in the world. So in order to unlock the potential of DeFi and transition into a newly, truly decentralized economy requires mass adoption. By replicating trillions of capital into blockchain and providing the infrastructure to support it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, today the stock market is valued over nine, $95 trillion. So if we can move only 1% of the global stocks uh, into DeFi, we can add about $950 billion in capitalization into crypto markets. So today the crypto market uh, is roughly around $2 trillion. Uh, the stable coin market cap is about $61 billion. 
but that's nothing compared to the global stock market at 95 trillion. Daily trailing uh, volume in crypto is around 175 billion. DeFi has about $50 billion in TVL uh, and total uh, transaction valued in digital payments about 6.68 trillion. So the opportunity here is massive. We see the growth of the market cap in crypto and that trend is gonna continue uh, to grow in the uh, upcoming future. We also see a growing global adoption of blockchain and cryptocurrencies overall over multiple regions. So today, as I mentioned earlier, there's about 2 million, user, 2 million users in DeFi. Uh, TVL in DeFi is growing. Yes, there's you know, corrections here and there, but overall the trend is growing at an accelerating pace. Crypto today compared to other investment classes, yes, there's more volatility, but at the same time, uh, it can be much more profitable than any other asset there is on the market. So if we look at crypto user growth versus the internet user growth, we see uh, a similar trend. So if we uh, analyze what happened to the internet, you know, since the early 90s to the day, we see global mass adoption. So if crypto follows the same trend line, we're going to see global mass adoption within the next 10 years. So uh, looking today at, at the uh, crypto Bitcoin, crypto market cap compared to other assets, we see that it's, this is just the beginning. We're still in the very first uh, uh, period of time uh, in the growth of cryptocurrencies. Today, uh, the market, uh, the crypto market has several issues. When we wanted to build our product, we looked at uh, issues in the market as users, what we want to uh, improve uh, and, you know, what problems there is and, you know, and ways to solve them. So today there's an issue with the lack of trust and transparency in the, in the industry. There is still a lack of adoption. So we're still in the first two to 3% of global population that have adopted crypto. Most products are too complicated for average users. There's an issue with regulation. There's insufficient integration with current financial infrastructure uh, and legacy systems. There's an issue for scalability of today's blockchain solutions and there's limited interoperability. What we're proposing as a solution is to build a transparent platform with accessible analytics. Everyone can see what's going on into the, on this platform in a very transparent way. Uh, we want to build a streamlined application for easy entry point for all newcomers. This way we can help newcomers, we can increase adoption. We want to build a complete ecosystem that covers users' needs. There's always the question, okay, why are we building this product? Oh, somebody else is trying to build something like that. Well, yes, but you know, the issue, the issue is that most products are still, you know, the, the industry is still fragmented. So we see one product. Uh, is, you know, one project is doing one product, another project is doing another product, but, you know, you have to connect multiple uh, wallets into multiple services, register on multiple platforms. Why not have a, a one-stop solution? Why not have a universal platform that covers all the needs of the users in one place? So another uh, uh, another uh, solution that we're trying to do is to integrate with legacy financial infrastructure. So that's with banks, that's with financial institutions, because this is the fastest way that we can bridge, you know, today's economy with DeFi, with the economy of the future, rather than just, you know, the complete house. Uh, that, that, you know, uh, chaos that we have uh, uh, today, you know, okay, you no, know, let's integrate with current institution, let's build a product that is viable, let's build an ecosystem that works for all. So presenting our solution, Zamayo, uh, a list of uh, products uh, that tailor to uh, a vast uh, amount of users from, as I said, uh, institutionals, to uh, uh, retail traders, to uh, uh, retail investors, all the way to new adopters, or even the people who are, you know, hearing the hype about Bitcoin and and you know wanna wanna get in into the market. So we have Z Morgan, which is in short a stablecoin loans platform uh, for loans secured by stocks as collateral. Uh, we have stable coins. We have our own utility token. We're building a smart digital asset exchange. We're building a dashboard that displays analytics uh, of, of our ecosystem, intelligent investment portfolios, which are ready-made investment portfolios built by trading experts. 
We have a universal CFI, DeFi wallet to manage uh, all crypto assets. Zami is our remittance solution uh, that I mentioned earlier, and Zenergy, which is a crypto payment solution for businesses. So how does our ecosystem look like? Uh, in short, this is a, a, an illustration uh, that shows what we're trying to build, how, how it's uh, interconnected. So we have a DeFi segment, we have our own traditional CFI uh, crypto tech, stable coins, uh, our Z Morgan protocol, our, our traditional fintech solution. So starting with our unique product, uh, and this is a unique product in the world, uh, you know, the world has never seen anything like that. Uh, it's an on-chain platform, Z Morgan, an on-chain platform for stable coin loans secured by stocks as collateral. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, investors today, you know, vast majority of investors, you know, uh, they're uh, basically dealing with stocks. So they invest in stocks, you know, they're buying stocks, hopefully, you know, hoping to, for these stocks to grow in value. And then, you know, they sell their stocks and make a profit or they're looking for dividends. If they want to go into crypto markets, they either need to uh, find new resources or close their positions in the stock market. So for a lot of uh, institutional investors, even retail investors, uh, this is a risky strategy because you know they understand what they're doing. You know they're comfortable in investing in stocks, but at the same time we want to bridge them into crypto markets. So how how are we going to do that uh, with our Z Morgan protocol? Uh, explaining a little bit how does it work. So basically, uh, borrowers in this case is institutionals, uh, lenders in this case is you know today's crypto users, our community. So our community. Uh, sends uh, liquidity to the pool. On the other hand, the borrowers, which are the stock investors, they send us their stocks. We put them in escrow accounts. Then via an Oracle, we pull real-time information from, let's say, NASDAQ, right? And then we issue a stable, we, we get the valuation uh, uh, via an Oracle from NASDAQ. And then we can issue a stable coin loan with up to 50% LTV, uh, to the borrowers. Borrowers in, uh, uh, then go and invest in different crypto projects. You know, we assume that investors, uh, institutional investors are competent uh, since, you know, they're in investing people's money, they're investing their own money. So, you know, from a, from a technical perspective, investing in crypto uh, is, you know, very similar to investing in stocks, same technical analysis, same fundamentals. So we assume they're competent in investing, so they can invest in crypto, they make money in crypto, and at the same time, uh, they keep their stocks that are held in, in our escrow accounts. So uh, after the maturity date of the loan itself that we issued, borrowers uh, pay back the stable coins to us, plus a small percentage, which is the interest rate, we call it insurance, they have to pay that in our own utility token ZAM. So they pay us back the loan, plus a small percentage rate that we share with our lenders, with our community. Our community makes money. Uh, the investors in this case were, were the borrowers, uh, as you can see on the graph, they uh, seamlessly transition into uh, crypto markets, they might make money in crypto, they keep their stocks, uh, lenders make money, uh, and everyone, is, is, uh, uh, everyone wins in this case. So to support, uh, to support this platform, uh, we built an ecosystem around it. So we have two stable coins, USDZ and ADZ. USDZ is crypto dollar, ADZ is crypto dirham. Uh, the question is why crypto dirham? We see a, a big opportunity in the GCC, Middle East, North Africa region, and we wanted to have the first stable coin that's spec to a local currency. So today our stable coins are backed by other stable currency, uh, stable coins, so BUSD, USDT, USDC on our corporate accounts on Binance. So eventually uh, our stable coins will be backed as liquidity grows in our ecosystem, our stable coins are gonna be backed by the actual stocks themselves. Stocks are very liquid assets. So this would be a very unique uh, use case of, the, of stocks. Uh, what are our stable coins can be used for? They can be used for pay, payments. They can be used in DeFi for remittance and for trading. Our next product is intelligent investment portfolios. 
So these are ready-made portfolios packaged together by trading experts. So the idea here is rather than uh, a user, you know, investing in uh, one project, we understand that crypto can be volatile. So the best way to hedge against volatility is to have a balanced portfolio. There's always a question that my friends ask me, okay, what's in your portfolio? What should I invest in? Well, with intelligent investment portfolios, you don't need to ask me. You can just go into our application, select a portfolio that satisfies your risk appetite. You know, you can see clearly how much return this portfolio made over the last 12 months, right? See how many investors invested in this portfolio and make, a, a, you know, make an educated decision based on that. Obviously, this is not a financial advice, but at the same time, this is a way for newcomers, for traders, you want to hedge against risk, you know, to select a balanced portfolio uh, developed by somebody who knows what, what he's doing or what she's doing uh, and, and invest accordingly. Uh, this product is great for uh, both newcomers. So, you know, they can basically just select what are the top portfolios, what who are the top traders and basically do uh, copy trading. Uh, also for uh, traders, it's a good way uh, to share their knowledge, to share their expertise and make some money uh, by uh, providing uh, these ready-made investment portfolios to other users. Also for institutionals, any institution can come in and create his own portfolio so that investors can invest in, in this portfolio. The first iteration of this portfolio uh, is going to be built by our own trading desk. But as the second iteration comes up, any kind of trader in the world uh, that feels confident that has the numbers to back, to, back, uh, to, to back his performance can come and create a portfolio. We want to have the best traders in the world to come and create portfolios for other users to come and invest in. This would onboard millions of new users over the, the course of the next four years. So the best performing digital assets packaged together in portfolios built by trading experts. And how are these portfolios made on, on what basis based on historical performance data, based on constant risk uh, assessment and constant industry analysis. ZAM Wallet is, our, is in the center of our ecosystem. Uh, we built a universal uh, wallet for CFI and DeFi. So if users want to keep the keys with us, they can have the CFI aspect of the wallet. If they want to keep the keys uh, in, their, in their disposal, they can use the DeFi aspect of the wallet. Today, our CFI aspect of the, of the wallet is powered by Binance. Binance is our broker via the broker program. Uh, they help us uh, with uh, liquidity, uh, with security, and access to over 200 cryptocurrencies. Uh, our, our wallet is uh, covered with high-grade security, so basically the world's most advanced protection methods, including SSL, double hashing, MFA, O2.0, and real-time firewall. So you can make sure that your digital assets are safe with us. Zammi is our uh, remittance solution that we have been developing since 2019. Uh, today we have, uh, this presentation is a little bit outdated. So we have, uh, uh, as of today, a little bit short of 20,000 registered users. Uh, we have seven currencies support, supported in eight uh, CIS countries. So users today can go uh, and send money from uh, any bank account in Russia and the recipients uh, can receive money at 50,000 locations across the CIS. Uh, we want to integrate remittance uh, into our crypto app. For this reason, we opened uh, communication with RippleNet to work with RippleNet and allow remittance on chain. So uh, uh, with our Zammi platform, we're continuing to grow that platform and we have the chance uh, using our infrastructure, using our presence in these eight CIS countries to onboard millions of new users from this region. Next product is our uh, digital crypto cards. So uh, this is a product for anyone who wants to use his digital assets to go and make purchases, whether online or at the POS. So it's a virtual card. Anyone can top it up with his digital assets and then make, make a purchase at any point that accepts Visa and MasterCard. Uh, we're building these cards in partnership with trusted providers worldwide uh, to enable uh, any crypto user to make daily purchases. And last but not least, 
uh, our Babylon Academy. So our Babylon Academy is an information portal for everything crypto and blockchain. It's designed for new users who have questions, you know, uh, like what's the difference between Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency? What's the difference between, you know, blockchain uh, and, and uh, uh, Ethereum, right? So uh, our Babylon Academy uh, has over, right now has over 50 different articles uh, that explains to new users uh, all the different terminologies, you know, uh, what's, what should they do to start trading? What is DeFi? Uh, basically, any question that they have in mind about crypto, uh, they can go and, and, uh, and find the answer uh, in our Babylon Academy. Over time, uh, we're planning to use the content that we developed for our Babylon Academy to have a gamified uh, a platform to learn uh, blockchain and crypto. Something very simple, something gamified uh, that people are interested in uh, and, you know, they can uh, accelerate their, their, uh, their transition into crypto and enrich their knowledge. So uh, our system is powered by our own uh, ZAM token. Uh, our token can be used uh, to pay for the interest rate in Z Morgan, uh, which we called insurance. Uh, it can be used for payments and transactions. It can be used for discounts and cashbacks. We use it for our own stable coin uh, stabilization. Uh, it can be used for network fees. It has a governance function. It can be used for liquidity mining, protocol management, and staking reward. Today, our token ZAM is sold at three cents in our application. We estimate that our token can reach all the way up to $3 within the next bull run. So starting from three cents all the way to $3 within the next a Bitcoin bull run, bull run. Why, why do we uh, 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 expect our token to grow? Obviously, we're going to have it listed on multiple exchanges, uh, market, constant market making, services on our platform can be paid uh, in ZAM. Uh, token lockup, we, we're aiming to have 95 of our tokens locked up via staking. You know, uh, we're going to be also buying out token from the revenue that we generate uh, on our uh, ZAM ecosystem uh, and obviously ecosystem development and constantly adding new products. Having a, comparing our project with other projects, so uh, ZamZam compared to Revolut, Nexo, and Terra, we like Revolut, we like Nexo, and we, we like Terra, and we have active conversation with all three of them. So we wanted to compare, compare ourselves uh, against these giants. Today, if you look at Revolut, it has a $33 billion market cap. Nexo has a billion dollar market cap. Terra has uh, a $4 billion market cap. Uh, we have an official valuation by one of our partners for $27 million for our uh, remittance solution, for our purely fintech solution. And we were advised to have $27 million in pre-money for our crypto project. So if you put them together, that would make only $54 million. So the potential, you know, if we compare the list of the products that we have to Revolut, Nexo, and Terra, we have a universal solution that lives in one ecosystem. So the potential for ZamZam as a company, uh, Zamayo as a platform to grow is massive. So, you know, uh, from $54 million, if we just catch up to Nexo, you know, that's a 20x growth. So I'm gonna skip a little bit uh, about our financials, our models. Uh, this is all, uh, by the way, available uh, in open format on our website, zam.io. Uh, we expect uh, the growth of our platform uh, within the next five years uh, so that you know, we match the giants that we uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, our roadmap, how are we gonna develop our uh, ecosystem? Also, this is accessible on our website. Our core team, uh, our core team. So our founder is Mr. Elia Benyaminov. Uh, Elia has been involved in over 16 companies, eight of which he founded uh, or managed uh, in multiple fields from IT uh, to blockchain, to FinTech, to aerospace, to construction, uh, uh, restaurants, and you name it. The guy is a, is a serial entrepreneur. Uh, that has a massive vision for the future. Uh, George Gus, our CEO and the head of product, also he has been working for the past 13 years on multiple IT projects, particularly fintech, e-commerce. 
you know, building projects ever since he was 13 years old. Myself, this is my fourth project. Uh, over the past of the last 12 years, I also had projects both in social media, in e-commerce, in infrastructure, uh, in agriculture, and now in blockchain. I've been working in the industry for the past four years, uh, and you know, I've been. My first point of entry to blockchain was 2011 when I met, you know, this random guy told me, you know, do you know about Bitcoin? Well, after I understood, after I read the white paper of Bitcoin, I understand this is the, the future. And that's why I believe in the industry. I believe where, where it's heading. Uh, Ali Own, our chief compliance officer, former senior officer at JP Morgan Chase as a compliance officer the, for the past eight, eight years, you have been working uh, in compliance in London and, and the UK. Xenia also, uh, she came from, uh, she's ex-PWC, she's been working in auditing, building financial models over the past six years. Uh, Mikhail, our chief technical officer, uh, he's been uh, a CTO for the past 13 years. Uh, building complex IT projects, also in fintech for quite a while. Alex Rosso, uh, the guy here with no picture, uh, he's been a cybersecurity expert for the past 23 years, building multiple networks. Today, our core team is 42 members. Over half of them are developers. Um, years and years and years of accumulated experience so that we can build an ecosystem like we have today. Our team is located all over the world. Our core team is, is located in Moscow, Russia. Uh, our team is located in Estonia, in Lithuania, in London, in the US, uh, Cyprus, Georgia, Belarus, uh, UAE, you name it. Uh, 42 team members and growing every day. Uh, just to update, uh, as we did this presentation uh, quite a while ago, uh, we, our advisor also, Glenn Grant, uh, who has been a formal director at uh, uh, Kraken Middle East. Uh, he's also working with us to build this ecosystem. Uh, and Vilma Matilla, who has been working on 40 plus uh, different uh, crypto and blockchain uh, 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 projects, pushing you know projects like Tron and VeChain and Aluna Social and 37 other projects. Uh, today, also, this is a little bit of outdated for partners. We added much, much many more partners. Uh, our, you know, our partner Binance. We're very proud of this partnership. Uh, we've been a, a Binance broker uh, ever since we started our project. Uh, Revolut, our good friends. We have an account with interactive brokers and so on. So today, there's an opportunity to invest in Zam. Uh, for institutional investors, we, we ran out of the uh, 0 0.15 uh, uh, allocation. We ran out of 0 0.02. We still have uh, allocation for institutions in the last strategic round at two and a half cents. And then for the community, uh, the listing price is uh, three cents. Uh, we're targeting Gate.io uh, for our listing. Uh, IDO is going to happen on PancakeSwap, Uniswap. For the pre-IDO campaign, uh, right now we're launching on ZeroSwap, uh, and you know we have another partner that we're gonna uh, announce in a in a very short period of time. So join us today in building the future of finance. Uh, buy Zam before our market value skyrockets before it's too late. You can find us on. Uh, you can follow our community. Find us on social media. Uh, we have a, a Telegram channel, Zam underscore IO, English chat, Zam IO chat. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Medium. Uh, you can see all of our code uh, on GitHub and obviously our white paper at docs.zam.io. If you, know, if you have any concerns, any questions, any feedback, any ideas, uh, uh, any commentary that you wanna add in, you wanna communicate with the founders, please let me know. Uh, you can write me on uh, Telegram uh, or Twitter. Uh, on Telegram, I'm uh, Amen Online X, A-Y-M-A-N Online X, or you can find me on Twitter. Uh, at Amen Online. So please feel free to contact me at any time uh, with your feedback, with your comments. Uh, we are a community focused, community oriented project. So, you know, we can only build such an ecosystem with the help of our community, with the support of our community. And, you know, together uh, we can make this happen. So 
thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm looking forward, uh, you know, uh, to build this ecosystem together with our community. Uh, and, you know, I'm uh, very happy uh, with our community. Uh, please let us know. Uh, and, you know, hopefully you join us on this, uh, on this venture. Thank you a lot. Uh, and yeah, I'm available. Write me uh, if you have any questions. So the next guest is our gold sponsor, Dmitry Shalutko, uh, CEO at BlyEconomy.com and advisor at TGDAO. Hello, everyone. My name is Dmitry Shalutko. I am the CEO of uh, Canadian Exchange by Economy.com. Uh, please be more attentive uh, how the domain name is by Economy.com because there is another project on the market by Economy.io. So we total different company. So actually, um, I'm in the world of cryptocurrencies since 2014. Uh, I came actually from the uh, stock market uh, and I used to be a trader and fund manager on New York Stock Exchange. Uh, it was like from 2011 and it was a good time. We used to trade Apple, uh, Amazon and this kind of um, active uh, shares at uh, that moment. So I came to the uh, cryptosphere as a, just a simple enthusiast. And I used to work in some blockchain project. We uh, fundraised during ICO $20 million and started to make uh, some uh, project development. It was a blockchain platform and then it still works successfully. Uh, I was a fundraising director and after that I started to be a business developer, uh, business development director and we used to have uh, partnerships with IBM, Lenovo, uh, Amazon Web Services, AliCloud, and these kind of giants. And this was this was a comp uh, uh, partnerships between a, a crypto company and uh, this kind of company. So it's very uh, useful uh, was for uh, company development. So I totally understand specifics of B two B and B two C blockchain and cryptocurrency. Uh, and also I um, handle economic and psychological degree from Yale University. So you can join me by the Twitter. I mostly tweet about um, by economy exchange development, but sometimes I'm also sharing some market opinion. So welcome. And today I want to share with you uh, the interesting topic. Um, so I use, um, I want to share with you my opinion and uh, my position because there is always a battle between um, crypto enthusiasts and uh, crypto investors and people who don't understand it and call it a bubble. So what's actually is it uh, crypto economics? Is it a bubble or it's a, a future uh, for us? Uh, let me provide just short introduction about my economy exchange. So we working on the market since 2019. Uh, we had headquarters in Canada. We have a United States MSB license and Canadian MSB license. We have offices in Japan, Korea, South Korea, uh, Russia, CIS, and UK. So we have on our platform more than 300 um, registered users and more than 100,000 uh, active uh, members. So we. Uh, focus on providing uh, customized fle flexible solutions for a successful implementation of blockchain in initiatives. Uh, we're providing spot trading, availability to buy crypto with uh, banking cards. And um, right now we also uh, develop an DeFi platforms. And of course we provide as a classic exchange listing on our platform. So uh, let's go about a topic, a major topic and uh, uh, Let's first of all uh, understand uh, what we consider as a financial bubble. So, what it mean in uh, people' opinion? So, if you if you will check in Wikipedia, 
uh, economic bubble, it's um, assets, what actually have a um, uh, like a change, very changeable price and um, uh, uh, price for these assets um, uh, is impulsive uh, and, uh, uh, and, and consistent. And um, these like bubbles and projects, we don't have a, a clear future. So um, it's like um, pumping every time and uh, there is no some kind of insider inside product part uh, in it, in, uh, no any inside development uh, of this kind of bubble. So, um, and if we look uh, at general to the whole world economy and uh, big financial institutions, we can go to banking sphere, we can go into fiat money sphere, uh, we can go to insurance, doesn't matter. If you will take a closer look, of course, all of these spheres, we have some kind of products and we somehow understand these products. Uh, but generally, if we will take a look, for example, for the United States dollar, um, we see what uh, every time treasury printing of a bunch of dollars uh, and actually uh, supply of these dollars is uncertain and very huge and the real supply and real cost of these dollars is actually just uh, self cost of a paper what uh, uh, these dollars was printed if it's a real money paper money but you, you know most of the money is electronic so no any cost just uh, it has a zero cost and no supply of this money so if we go closer to any sphere, to any economy, um, uh, like uh, sector, we will find out what uh, there is a lot of bubbles over there, and uh, uh, all generally can be called as a bubble because um, we always have defla uh, deflation, we all always have inflation of the fiat monies and uh, uh, prices for the even groceries always uh, rise and you actually probably seen it during the COVID-19 pandemic situation. So um, in my opinion, people call uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency bubble because uh, people just don't understand uh, this new kind uh, of new economy and new uh, rules of this economy. Uh, and the uh, way like halt uh, to the old financial found, financial foundations and um, they just don't want to like uh, change their mind to look around and just go deeper and go inside and understand what, what actually uh, goes around it and um, uh, what's um, what, what, what actually Bitcoin and cryptocurrency about. So uh, we had a lot of people who was very skeptical about uh, whole market and Bitcoin and it's like uh, Don Tapscott who actually after uh, understanding of this technology who uh, he provided a great book about Bitcoin and right now he has uh, Bitcoin University in Canada and also you have a very famous JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon he who actually like a couple of years ago was really negative strongly negative about crypto and bitcoin but after uh, understanding uh, of the value and uh, like benefits of a uh, crypto for the whole world actually jp morgan right now is a leader of adoption and testing of uh, cryptocurrency um, and blockchain uh, solutions and uh, development of new products. So, um, what actually, um, if we go in uh, around the value and understanding of the value uh, of uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency, we need to uh, understand what actually uh, goes around it, because not all of the people um, uh, like deep in tech. And I'm actually not a uh, deep tech technician, 
uh, guy and I'm more like a business related and communication related person. So, but uh, in, it's always understandable uh, for both of uh, kind of people like uh, who do not, not deep in tech or who like just want to invest in this market or just want to read about it. So if we go closer, so there's a uh, top huge benefits what actually blockchain and cryptocurrencies provides for the world right now. So the first is decentralization. Uh, and I can tell you it's a kind of unique um, phenomenon for all over the world because before there wasn't a real decentralized system who, uh, which wasn't controlled by any group of people, single person, or uh, government or like um, some private company, it doesn't matter. But right now we faced with unique uh, products and unique situation when on the market, there is a uh, type of, uh, if we will call it classic way, type of a company, type of organization, what's uh, what absolutely decentralized. Bitcoin is absolutely decentralized. It 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 not controlled by any part. Uh, it, it, it Bitcoin don't have don't have any influence uh, from inside, from the team members, from the owner, from the CEO, from the ministers. <laughs> so um, actually, it's a kind of unique thing for the whole of the world. And I'm pretty sure uh, what in future we just get a lot of benefits from uh decentralization function of cryptocurrencies um also second huge part is autonomy and i'm talking here about smart contracts uh so um actually it's a lot of um not blockchain products and development around the world what actually provide uh good automatization and the uh, realization of kind of functions inside of applications, um, inside of some products. It can be banking products, it can be even food delivery. All of them made without blockchain and without smart contracts. But if you go deep inside of a smart contract system and how it works, you will see what when utility of and availability of use cases where you can use it it's much more uh, bigger and actually the autonomy and autonomy what provides by what provided by smart contracts it's huge and you can even use it in um, in some like uh, web development or you can use it in real use cases like uh, oil industry gas industry and via smart contracts, you can handle payment or you can handle any da data processes. So um, also in the future, we will see a lot of um, and more use cases where real ones in real life, what will be uh, useful for many people. And it, was, it will be developed by smart contracts. Uh, speed of value transfer, this is, uh, already money related questions and um, we can see what uh, there is a huge problem uh, worldwide uh, about the uh, money transfers value transfers from a country to country from the peer to peer from person to person and um, the old financial systems very um, Mm, very old way of course we upgrade their products we upgrade their systems but we generally the whole system very old um, and you not useful for the people anymore because uh we go into an hour uh, we go uh, to an hour like the speed of uh, life we go into another speed uh people need another speed of um, uh transactions and the uh, speed of uh, value transfer so uh, the old financial systems can't provide it and here is the blockchain and cryptocurrencies what actually provide like a uh, um, uh, delivery of, of of your funds in uh, just milliseconds without any documents without any 
uh, problems, uh, investigations without any like security measures. I mean, it's already a secured system, but uh, there is no like, uh, there is no uh, human uh, human problems and social problems, and um, uh, the speed and because of it, speed very fast. And uh, second, uh, the huge thing is equal distribution of the money, because we know the uh, wealth distribution in the world total different. It's there is a huge difference between, for example, developed countries like United States or Europe, and for example, some poor Asian countries and um, Af African countries, where people used to live for one dollar or a couple dollars per day. And for them, cryptocurrency world is a huge availability to uh, get some funds to uh, to get like more wealth to their families, where they can eat food, normal food, where they can buy for normal food, because they actually making some uh, money from a cryptocurrency world, and this is a very good and and beneficial thing what happened with the whole world and um like for example a small thing like airdrop distribution yeah there's many tokens what uh people able to get free just uh, making uh, easy tasks so we can see what uh, mostly the people from the uh, poor countries participate in airdrops but finally, we can get like $10, $50 as a reward and spend it for their families and the food. So I, I never seen uh, such uh, like uh, distribution of the money from banks, for example, or any organization. Of course, we provide some money for the charity, uh, but uh, for example, we can send uh, like 10,000 COVID masks, but what uh, is, it, is it will be helpful for the millions of the people who are very poor and they can buy food. So uh, crypto world actually changing the situation and I, I like it uh, so much. What influence of it, such a great and epic. And of course, there is a thousands of technology application cases of blockchain and crypto. So I'm not able to uh, spell over all of them because it's really thousands of them and I already mentioned from the uh, like food delivery, from the uh, transfer of the money, from the like um, any industrial cases everywhere. Um, blockchain is adoptable and cryptocurrency is able to be useful. So let me tell you why is crypto not a bubble? You already, uh, uh, on the previous slide, you already saw what there is a like, full list of benefits what crypto providing actually. So here is a specific details why it's not a bubble. So first of all, the current uh, market cap of uh, all cryptocurrencies, and it's uh, more than 12,000 of them, as you can see, uh, the current market cap is more than $2 trillion. So can you imagine uh, this size of uh, uh, money and market cap? It's very huge. It's very huge and it's actually started from the zero. Of course, uh, such fast growing, uh, always uh, people, when, when people see this kind of growing, uh, the first thing what we can think about uh, is like it's a bubble or it's a fake and uh, where is it not possible to grow so fast and so much in such time period. But uh, remember what we live in in different time with different speed. So um, where, where was like old institutions on the stock market and all companies and the way like grow it uh, like 20, 30% per year. Uh, sometimes where it was minus 
uh, and will not grow. So uh, in all people opinion, uh, this is, was okay and good, but right now it's in just new era of uh, getting new uh, new tops and um, getting new points and grow much more faster. And by way examples, for example, of uh, Apple or Tesla, uh, we can see what actually on the stock market, stock, stock market, the growing also started to be a faster because uh, with the existence of crypto, uh, all type of companies also need to be uh, uh, like, um, we, we, need, we need to be in trend. We need to be, the, also need to attract investors uh, for the long term. That's why Elon Musk uh, like uh, cryptocurrencies and he are always looking for it because he understands without, without such growing uh, his companies, his shares uh, of the companies will not be popular. And this is also a way to attract people from crypto world to buy Tesla shares, to buy Tesla car. <laughs> so uh, it's also good, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm personally uh, like Elon Musk for his, uh, for all the things what he doing and providing to the whole world. And um, uh, I know what crypto community also like him because uh, if uh, such a person uh, going deeply and understand what crypto is uh, really useful and uh, there is a good future and big future about it. So actually he can influence to another people. So uh, why crypto not a bubble? Because since 2009, uh, this bubble should be, have burst many times already, but uh, it continues to grow and um, very huge uh, point here and huge uh, thing what you need to understand governments of countries we will not get involved in a bubble of this magnitude never so um, El Salvador we actually adopted crypto as a uh, general currency in their country and crypto loyalty in the United States uh, and recognition crypto by many countries like Japan and others. This is a huge things. What actually, uh, if you if you actually wisdom person and thinking about the current situation of economy and thinking about future development, uh, so I think you uh, not even more think what crypto is a bubble because uh, huge points saying what uh, it's actually a real economy of a new age. Um, and also one more thing what showing us uh, about crypto development and crypto perspectives, uh, the COVID and global economy vulnerability uh, you all saw this situation. Many of you have uh, faced uh, the problems during uh, during COVID nineteen. Uh, so it's it was a and it's still a big tragedy for the whole of the world. And of course, when whole of the world stops and uh, uh, pause all of the transactions, economic operations. Uh, trading with each other uh, and spreading the goods to each other. Um, the whole economy losing huge money. So uh, fall in the trade by 2020 uh, was more than 30% uh, due to COVID-19. So World Trade Organization um, declared this. And uh, the coronavirus pandemic uh, will deprive the global economy for of 5.5 uh, trillion in the next two years, because uh, you understand the influence of uh, this kind of uh, epic and huge things away uh, continues of, of years. 
So we will still uh, on the pause. Uh, we still can't uh, visit all of the countries and the trading operations, uh, product operations still not available between many countries. So we still in global crisis. And uh, um, you actually this is show a complete non-efficiency of old models of economy and doing business because the good models were uh, always ready for this kind of things and uh, problems and autonomous decentralized things and uh, uh, crypto companies where actually can handle these situations because they work without any influence, uh, external influence and do uh, any external things, do uh, any uh, like global problems where we still will work. So uh, here's an interesting uh, chart of relation between uh, the daily COVID cases and Bitcoin Ethereum price chart. And as you can see, the more, the more cases we see on the, on the, in the world, uh, chart also going high. So this is very good relation. And actually it shows what during the high number of the cases, people uh, start to work from the home or uh, they actually uh, sadly stay without any work and job or losing jobs and um, they start to find the new ways to uh, get money and they actually don't join the um, stock market because it's not really profitable and they join crypto market and the uh, growth of a cryptocurrency market uh, and join new investors is a huge sign what actually um, the COVID actually like um, had a positive effect for the whole crypto market. And uh, it's not about uh, bu bubble growing. It's about the availability of the people to get money, to make profits on this market. Of course, it's not 1,000% uh, profitable uh, and people also losing money. But uh, as I can see by my experience, most of the cases of the losing is always not enough education from the people side. There is a lot of information in the internet about investing, about cryptocurrencies, and people just don't want to um, uh, do research, investigate, check all details. But uh, by example, if you want to invest to Tesla um, on Nice on New York Stock Exchange. You always go in, you will go inside of a documentation part. You will go inside of research of a company, not just like you uh, like the Tesla and ride in it. You will make a deep research and it always happens on stock market. So the crypto market have no any difference uh, uh, about investing. And uh, if people want really make money on it, we need to make research. We need to go deep inside of a company. We need to go deep inside to a Bitcoin uh, information and how all the system works. So we, clear, we have clear understanding and where investments actually will be more profitable. And like brief, uh, introduction what is happening on, in the crypto market right now so I can uh, tell about like four biggest things for now what's happening on the market so first of all and first one what actually has a, a great potential and good growing uh, in the current time it's of course NFT market non-fungible token market so currently, uh, in the third quarter of 2021, uh, we're, home, uh, trade, we're trading volume on NFT market because uh, it's actually market around the trading, not like uh, uh, the whole market size is consist from the trading because it's a 
uh, sales of a final uh, token, of a final uh, things and goods, what actually goes with fifth token. So uh, it's actually reached $10 uh, billion dollars in the third quarter of 2021. And it's a 700% increase from the previous quarter. So you can imagine how fast and how uh, huge uh, growing has this market right now. And I want to especially say what NFT is a, a real use case and real products uh, market uh, in cryptocurrency world. So we know um, many of items in NFT, it's like uh, some collectibles, some, um, some pictures, but uh, some of them it's like art collections uh, and the real paintings. Some of the NFTs uh, can be like specific alcohol things like wine. You can, you, if you like a um, wine producer, you can actually uh, distribute, uh, if you have like old wine, you can make an NFT with it uh, and you can sell out your wine via NFT. And it's a very, it's a real use case and many uh, producers in France and Italy doing this. And in, in, in the whole world, I think uh, it will continue. So actually I like NFT mostly because uh, it provides and it actually connects the real products and real economy world with crypto world. And this is a very huge thing. This is a real value what actually coming into the crypto world. And I can tell you about my experience. Usually, actually, in 2018, we started um, the first NFT things was a crypto kitties. It was just cartoons. Uh, what was uh, on Ethereum blockchain and uh, people uh, collected and sell out to each other. So it's actually reached like $100,000 price for one kitty. And after that, um, we actually also develop uh, where use cases with marking of uh, uh, products and wine also uh, in blockchain. So this is actually NFT development. And it was in 2018. And right now in 2021, we can see what NFT growing NFT in good development, and I'm pretty sure what in next um, five ten years it will have more development, and it will be uh, it will be real use case and usability of a crypto and the real products in our real life. So um, we can imagine, and in my opinion, it's also possible. For example, you can buy a Tesla car like NFT. So you just transfer NFT token uh, with a price same as a car and owner actually owning with this NFT the real car. So this is how it will work in future, in my opinion. And it will be a very useful thing. You don't need to uh, have any papers, uh, problems uh, and these kind of things. You can just transfer it like uh, in 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 few seconds or in less than second depends on blockchain and get final result <clears throat> okay the next huge thing but actually uh, in development of the mark on the market it's uh, uh, play to earn uh, play to earn sector on cryptocurrency market So uh, we know what gaming industry is very huge uh, in the world. So by the Forbes estimates in 2023, it will reach, reach 200 billion uh, market cap and value. So actually uh, right now the crypto world um, and people 
uh, crypto enthusiast. Why made uh, why, why, why bring actually like second wave to uh, gaming market? And it was a dream of many gamers and game developers, what users and uh, players of the different games they can earn money from the gaming, the real money. And actually, uh, with connection of cryptocurrency and gaming, any game, people able to earn crypto inside of a game and of course, cash it out and buy a cup of coffee or burger or car. <laughs> so it's a real revolution and um, it's in huge development right now. Uh, the biggest case right now, it's Axe Infinity. It's a huge company with billion dollars of market cap and the whole market uh, market cap of uh, play to earn tokens. Right now it's uh, 13 billion dollars. It's huge. It's actually huge. It, and it's actually also came from the zero and uh, the next uh, year, 2022, will be a whole year of uh, success and development of a plane to earn games and model. Because um, actually dream of uh, millions of uh, players around the world becoming true. They can play and they can make money. Okay, the next one, what actually uh, interesting on the market, it's not a new and uh, we all know and heard about it. It's a decentralized finance market. Uh, it's inside of cryptocurrency. So during the 2020, uh, it's actually was a, a huge driver of the whole market. And we get many companies what actually provided first uh, first time in the crypto history. We provided the DeFi services for the people. And as we can see, this is a chart of all development, development of DeFi since 2017. So in 2020, 20, uh, interesting, yeah, during the COVID time, <laughs> people, people had a lot of time for development and they finished uh, their development during COVID. <laughs> so since 2020, it started, started to grow like from 5 billion cap to almost a 100 billion market cap. And it's actually a value locked in the uh, DeFi. That means what people lock in their crypto uh, and they getting benefits from it. They getting, getting um, profits and annual uh, yield rates. So uh, uh, we also can see Ava dominance. Uh, Ava is the like, biggest uh, provider of um, DeFi products on the market. So it's really good um, product project. And uh, as we can see, uh, with DeFi not dead, it still has a huge value on the market. And I'm pretty sure it will continue to have a, a huge influence in the crypto market because it's not stands on the one point right now. Uh, companies develop new products and new benefits. Uh, like we started to make uh, crypto insurance uh, and a lot of products also coming from the real world and mm, uh, developers of a projects of a, of a DeFi projects by making making adoption of uh, these products in the DeFi sector. So, uh, in my opinion, DeFi mm, will always now be on the top of the market because I can tell you it's like um, decentralized banks and banks of a new era of a new crypto era and. Mm, we have a really great future, really great. Okay, so um, as you can see, like from 2017 to, till 2020, three years uh, average uh, needed for uh, development of uh, such product. So in a couple of years, it can be a new stage of DeFi uh, 
dominance on the market. Um, also, I want specially to uh, say about Solana. And as you can see here on this slide, there is nothing uh, say about it. Just look at the uh, average cost per transaction and uh, look to the uh, transactions speed per second. So if you understand crypto world, if you're using Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain or Tron, you understand the commission part and you know the commission rights actually. So Ethereum was a, was a like father of smart contracts. Ethereum was a, a father of the era, of the whole era of the existing many tokens and existing of many platforms. But um, right now Ethereum has a very huge price, more than three thousand dollars and uh, per token. And in my opinion, it's very high because we know Ethereum still has a big problems about um, transaction cost. So actually it's a, um, sometimes it happens what people need to pay a $100 to send only $1 value. So it's uh, very, um, it's very sad to see this and it's not accept acceptable on the current time. And now we see Solana, the huge competitor of Ethereum. And actually, if you can see uh, transaction cost, um, I, can, I can tell you what, it's not a competitor, it's a killer of Ethereum for sure. Because many platforms declared this, but none of them uh, actually provided the real product. But Solana already working or working very, very good. I have a good smart contracts. Uh, by example, by economy, uh, uh, now working close with uh, Solana ecosystem. And actually we uh, making a huge bet for, for Solana project and Solana ecosystem. So uh, the existing of Solana on the market right now, it's a, a very huge thing and you will see it uh, on the second position after Bitcoin, I'm really sure. And maybe with some of the time it can be top one because uh, the benefits what provide, was provided by this project were really huge. Okay, a couple of words about uh, Biconomy Exchange development because we're part of the crypto world, and part of the ecosystem. And as a crypto exchange, we're always in development. So um, we just released BitToken uh, one month ago. It was a huge step uh, in development of a crypto exchange. So Token uh, has a successful launch. We uh, provided like 200 uh, uh, X profits to our investors and you can see by the chart it's the coin actually feeling good itself and uh, growing uh, more and more. Uh, we have a burning models, we have a deflationary model uh, with 6% tax. So no one exchange token don't have this on the market right now. And actually we provided bit staking product. Uh, so this is also unique product for the holders of bit token. And the average API by this product is 1000%. So it's amazing numbers. And also no one exchange token not providing this currently on the market. So why are we providing this? Because we, because we can do it. Because we want our holders to benefit from the holding it. And we want the development of our token and exchange. So actually, bit staking is the first stage of development of own whole DeFi platform. So but step by step, we will add more tokens, more coins. Uh, maybe we even uh, will have a cooperation with Aave and connect our ecosystem to provide more uh, DeFi products. Also in our development, BitDAO, uh, 
uh, ecosystem. It's a decentralized uh, governance system for our holders. We will use Solana uh, for this product and because uh, Solana right now provide uh, very good smart contracts and cheap transactions. So uh, we're picking this. And of course, in development, BitSwap uh, product, uh, what actually will provide opportunity to uh, make fast uh, transactions and um, exchange uh, any currency, any crypto from crypto to crypto. And also, of course, uh, with our uh, availability uh, to buy crypto bank uh, cards, you will uh, you will have a full cycle of uh, transactions from fiat to crypto. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for being with me today. Uh, hope my uh, speech today was useful for you. And right now you're thinking what uh, crypt, uh, you you I hope you will take a closer look uh, to the crypto world and. Uh, uh make a like uh good enough investigation of the whole crypto world and uh, uh, we'll get clear understanding what actually uh crypto is already such deep in uh, our life and economy and uh, uh, govern uh, some countries started to adopt it and use so uh there is no like you don't have a right from now to call crypto a bubble because uh, there's still some uh, silly people in some governments in different countries what still call it bubble. But I'm pretty sure uh, who don't understand it, who don't join this market now, we will lose in future. And in my opinion, uh, in actually uh like in next five years every third person in the world will have a cryptocurrency wallet wallets with different crypto and it will be useful and people will share with each other uh, tokens and coins like fiat money so thank you so much uh join by economy uh join my twitter and see you next time goodbye We help fund, build, and localize tech startups in the world's most promising regions. Cinefy is a one-stop solution for tech companies trying to make sense of China and Southeast Asia. Check out more at cinefy.group. Imagine a lake 
with clear water and unpolluted air. Imagine a website with real news and no hidden, unlabeled, sponsored articles masquerading as real news. That place exists, and it's called Be in Crypto. The first and only cryptocurrency news portal to provide complete transparency and honest news. Pure, relevant, informative. Are you in? So next speaker is Lin Wei Jie Japet, project lead at Metaser. All right, everyone. Um, it's Jafet here. I'm the project lead, one of the project leads for Metas here. Right, we are a hybrid options platform built on the Binance Smart Chain and on uh, Solana. Right, so today I'm actually here to just give you guys a brief introduction of the project. Um, not a very long one, but I think it's going to be one that will cut straight to the point. Okay, um, and I think the best way for me to explain this is through our light paper, right, through our light paper. Uh, which is why right now I'm going to share my screen and go through with you guys the light paper. Okay, so this is our light paper. All right, to make things very simple, let me briefly explain to you guys the three core elements of Metas here. Now, um, at the heart of the project are our two tokens. Metas and Maytech. We'll cover Metas first, right? Metas is the utility token, whereas Maytech is the governance token of the platform. Our main product is hybrid options. Hybrid options, okay? Our complementary products is insurance and platform as a service. So, I will cover more about each of these aspects as we go on in the slides, okay? Now, um, in terms of hybrid options, let me just be very, very straightforward here. Our hybrid options platform is a very simple product that has been proven to work um, for many different platforms in the past. All we are doing is taking the same platform, but putting it on the blockchain, right? So I think the best way for me to sort of show you guys is to let you see the platform and how it works. So let me just do that. Let me, sh let me share another screen to sh show you how the platform looks like. So this is how the platform looks like, okay? You have the current price. This is on testnet. So our product is already on testnet. But um, we are going to main that in about two months' time. We are very, very close. Okay. So this is the daily chart. All right. Participants should be switching to the five minute chart. Okay. And let's say right now, in the next five minutes, I think that BNB against USDT is going to go up. So my wallet balance is 1.13. So what I'm going to do is maybe I'm going to place a trade for call. Right. I think it's going to go up. So I'm going to do a call trade. So when you do a call trade, you can see that the trade appears here instantaneously. There's no need to confirm with a MetaMask. There's no need to approve the transaction. It, uh, it happens instantaneously. And this is on the Binance Smart Chain, which, as we all know, is getting increasingly congested. But for us, we managed to innovate and find a way to make sure that instant transactions can happen. And the way we did this is very simple. If you go to wallet, you can see that we allow you to deposit 
your BNB first. So you will deposit into a pool. You deposit only whatever you want to trade. After you deposit, you can withdraw. So right now I have 1.12 BNB. Right, when you withdraw, it doesn't withdraw to another balance. It withdraws straight back to your MetaMask wallet. So from the MetaMask wallet, let's say for example right now in my MetaMask wallet, maybe I want to make a deposit, right? Let's say I want to make a deposit. For example, maybe uh, let me just go to the right wallet, okay? Let me go back, connect the wallet again, okay? And I go back to wallet. Okay, let's say I want to deposit some BNB, right? Let's say, very simple, I have about, right now in my MetaMask wallet, I have about 0 0.79, right? 0 0.79, okay? So I'm gonna share the whole screen so that you can see my entire screen, okay? So let's say right now I'm gonna deposit 0 0.1 BNB, right? Transaction under progress, just click confirm, give it a while. What will happen is that you will see the total balance here go up, right? So you can see it went up. So now I have 0 0.17 of BNB to trade. So after I deposit, go to option. All right, now you can see my balance is 0 0.17, right? So let's say I want to trade, I have a feeling that uh, BNB USDT is gonna go up. Maybe let's, say, let's go to the five minute chart. Let's say I do some technical analysis. Okay, I do some technical analysis. Maybe I do support resistance or whatever it is. I think that BNB against the USDT is gonna go up in the next five minutes. I'm gonna place a trade. Let's say I place a 0 0.01 trade. I do a call, right? Because of our, what we have done, now the trade is instantaneous. And there's this special button here called insurance. So if you click that, what will happen is that we allow you to pay Metas to, stop, to sort of stop the trade. By stopping the trade, for example, if you are out of the money, meaning that right now I did a call, but unfortunately the price is below the strike price. Right now, my strike price is below the current price. So I'm profiting. But what if this goes below my strike price? Then maybe I'll be inclined to say, okay, look, enough is enough. I'm going to stop the trade. I'm going to use my metas and I'm going to stop the trade. I'm going to recover my 0 0.01 BNB. Simple as that. That is what the insurance button is for. Okay. So in other words, I reverse the whole thing. I pay a small amount of money and I take back my trade. So this is what the insurance function is for. And the insurance function can only be activated by using metas. And that's why we have the metas balance here. Right now, obviously, I don't have enough metas. That's 12.12, but I only got 0 0.8. So again, you can come back to the wallet. You can deposit more metas if you want to. Okay, so that is a run through of the platform and how it works. It's pretty slick. Um, no other DeFi platform has managed to achieve instantaneous transactions. And number two, no other DeFi platform has managed to achieve zero fees trading. When you execute this trade, it's zero fee. I deducted exactly 0 0.01. I didn't deduct any more BNB than I should have. If you don't believe me, I can try again. Okay, 0 0.169, do a call. See, 0 0.159. I didn't deduct any additional BNB for your guess. So right now we are using BNB as the entry currency and speculating on BNB against the USDT. As we progress, we will be including other currencies. Okay, to speculate on and other currencies to enter the trade with. All right, so that's a brief walkthrough on the platform. Let me just go back to the slides. Okay, so these are the slides. I think it was very important for me to go through the platform so that you guys understand what the product is like. It's something, it's a product that has been proven to succeed uh, because it's so smooth. The, the connection, the trade execution is seamless. Okay, and of course, the other interesting aspect which I didn't show in the platform just now is that now, instead of just trading the options, you can become a maker. You can actually contribute liquidity as a maker, right? Let me just um, show that again. Okay, so if you come back here, okay, and you click on staking, you can actually stake your BNB as a maker, meaning that you stake your BNB to become part of the liquidity pool that will pay out to users who profit in the trade. But at the same time, for the users, when they enter the trade, if they lose the trade, it also goes back to this pool. So right now it's one BNB to how many MBNB, right? So it's very simple, right? Um, basically reverse that. Uh, what will happen is that as this figure comes down, 
it means that you're profiting. When this figure goes up, it means that you're making a loss as a maker. What we will do is that we will reverse this. Lah. We will enhance the user experience by taking one MBMB equals to how many BMB. This MBMB is like a receipt token that you get when you stake your BMB. So in the future, when you want to redraw, you add the MBMB back in return for your BMB. If you profited, you'll get back more BMB. If you made a loss, you'll get back less BMB. That's how it works. Okay? So let me go back to the slides. All right. So um, I think I have explained pretty well how the whole platform works. Maybe this is the overall roadmap. Okay, this is just a product platform overview. People can do call output, all right, for five minutes. Uh, of course, as we go on, we may have 15 minutes, 20 minutes, short-term options, right? In the money, at the money, out of the money, right? So just now I demonstrated at the money, but actually you can trade at, uh, in the money and out of the money as well. Of, of course, the payout ratio is very different for in the money and out of the money. Right, then you have this. Uh, this was our old wireframe. As you can see, the platform is not the same as this. Right, I think these are all formulas. Uh, you guys might not be very interested in this. You can find the details of this in our white paper. I'm not gonna go through the, you know, the, the details with you guys, <laughs> the formulas and etc. Right, this is the in, in uh, insurance, right? Uh, this is the overall architecture of our ecosystem, right? So the insurance can only be paid for using metas. Right, those people who contribute to the single currency liquidity pool, this is the also called the maker's pool. When the holders lose, their trade or their currency which they use to trade will enter this pool. When they win, this pool is the one that pays them out. So it's like team A versus team B. Team A is the makers, team B are the holders. The holders are basically the traders, the users of the platform, right? So that's about it. Right, so um, as, as we progress, we will start with cryptocurrencies and even within cryptocurrencies, we may even have options on NFTs, right? You never know, right? So we're starting with BNB, but we'll go to Bitcoin, we'll go to Ethereum, we'll go to Ripple, we'll include all the large cap coins as well. Then we will proceed to FX, indices, commodities, and stocks, right? These are the other assets that will be added into the Metasea brand as we go on. And like I said, from five minute options, we'll progress to 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and one hour. Okay. So um, this is the kind of the horizontal expansion of the platform, right? Okay, platform as a service. I think this is pretty um it, it, people understand the term in many different ways. Uh, whenever we say this term, people always get a bit confused. But I just want to clarify when we say platform as a service, it basically means that. Right now, users are using BNB to enter the trade. So for example, if we partner up with a new project and they want to add a utility to their token, maybe we partner up with project XYZ and then they have a token called XY, right? And then they want their token, they want to enable their token to purchase a hybrid option because they know there's trading volume there, they know it's an exciting product, they want to add this utility in, we can do that for them. This is one of the ways that we partner them. So we enable their currency to be used as a trading currency or a purchasing currency for hybrid options, okay? So um, in order to lease on matters here, meaning in order for their tokens to be enabled to trade hybrid options, they need to stick MATEC, which is our governance, and they need to create a small liquidity pool, right? So uh, in other words, they need to have their own maker's pool, right? So when people trade using their token, when their users profit, they are also profiting in their tokens. So not only are we creating a utility on the entry side of the trade, we are also creating a utility on the maker side of the trade, team A and team B, both team A and team B. Okay, both sides of the equation. All right. Okay, so these are all our platform specifications. Nothing has changed. It's pretty much the same. Um, some of you may ask me, so what is this governance token about, right? Governance token, basically, when you hold on the governance token, you'll be entitled to a number of votes. With those things in mind, uh, what will happen in the later stage of the project is that we will allow the people who hold on the main tech to vote on specific issues. 
right? So right now the project is still young. We still want to handhold the project. We still want to guide the project along. But um, when we reach a later stage, it will be, we, we, we will have to let the community decide where the project will go. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to, um, I think all this is not that important tokenomics. You can find this on our white paper as well. This is our vesting schedule, right? As you can see, the team has no tokens until the seven month. Our project blueprint, right? Basically, we'll expand the product. We will do a lot of BD and partner out with projects. We will also partner up with agents and affiliates to bring in users. Right, that's basically the BD, BD side of things, right? At the same time, we will also be looking at possible centralized exchanges to lease our token on. Um, but all in all, before I end the presentation, I just want to say that this is all in all a very, very exciting product. Um, and it's something that the crypto space needs anyway. Uh, somebody needs to develop a proper product for this. And that's why Metasphere is here to do it. Okay, so um, that's it from me. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, Jefford here, Project Lead of Metas here. And thank you for listening.
bears and bulls are the two driving forces of the crypto market, depending on who buys and who sells. The bear. His superpower is to make money even when the market is down. Bear's strategy is selling short and provoking a supply increase. The bull. The whole bull's life is dealings for a rise. His main goal is a growing market. Bull is optimistic and pluckily beats first. The confrontation of bulls and bears lasts forever and as its price depends on who leads the fight. So, the next guest is Dmitry Prokopenko, co-founder of Block Oracle Capital, BD at Treasure Land. It's nice to see you, Dmitry. Hello, everyone. My name is Dmitry. And I am business developer from Treasureland uh, NFT trading platform. I'm glad to be here today on Synopsis event, and I'm glad to introduce you Treasureland and what kind of features we have and what kind of data we have on our uh, NFT trading marketplace. So uh, as you see, our website is called Treasureland.market. So we are willing to be a Treasureland for many, many people, so our users can find some kind of treasures over there and let's check it out let's check our pitch deck mm. so um talking about nfts for last two years it has been a, the biggest trend in cryptocurrency and blockchain industry so we can ha we have seen uh the growth from the market from 13 about 14 million us dollars uh, market cap of of the uh, NFTs market in 2020 have been grown to 2.5 billion in 2021, and many top uh, cryptocurrency and traditional investment um, entities participated in in this market. We also have seen superstars and different influencers from traditional world and uh, and cryptocurrency world uh, participating in in selling their own NFTs. And the last news I have seen that uh, Snoop Dogg also put uh, his avatar as a CryptoPunk, uh, which I, I have been wondering. And uh, actually, I, I wasn't really wondered about that, but it's also big news because he's a big influencer in hip hop, uh, in hip hop uh, sphere. So um, uh, Treasureland right now uh, having a huge trading volumes and we are on the third place on Ethereum right now. And our trading volume is big, and you can see how much fees we pay uh, in Ethereum. It's more than 1,000 Ethereum in the fees on trading on Ethereum, which is uh, showing the result of trading. And you can see this is not washing trading because uh, it's very hard to make wash trading on Ethereum with so high fees. Uh, so this all natural uh, trading volumes. And what is Treasureland? So basically introducing Treasureland is a multi-chain NFT platforms, uh, which here given possibility to publish uh, content uh, in NFTs and connect together users, creators, consumers in more decentralized way. Uh, I want to admit that we are multi-chain NFT platform, which is supporting right now um, BSC chain, uh, Polygon and Ethereum. And uh, we are one of the, we are leading to be one of the best uh, gateways to Web 3.0 in the future. And in the future, we are willing to expand our, our line of the blockchain to other blockchains, such as Solana, Near, uh, Avalanche, and others. So um, what is Treasure Solutions and what kind of good features we have in, in, uh, in our platform? First of all, as I say, we are multi-chain NFT uh protocol which aggregating uh, nfts in uh, under one spot which is uh given possibility 
very suitable and very convenient to trade NFTs. You can just switch between different wallets. Uh, later, we'll show how to do that. Um, display and trades NFTs for financial assets. So basically, we're showing NFTs and you can trade with different, different uh, assets in the future. You can choose, it can be BNB or, for example, for example Ethereum or uh, it can be a Matic token and Polygon. It also can be tradable to um, stable coins in the future, which this feature is developing right now. Uh, we support in lazy mint, uh, zero gas fees uh, to create one NFT. So basically, if you create an NFT, you need to have minted. And uh, while you're minting, you need to pay minting fees. Uh, in our case, minting fees will be paid while uh, someone purchasing your NFT. So uh, when you mint in your NFT, it doesn't mean that you need to pay minting fees, which is, can be pretty high on Ethereum. So some of the creators cannot afford it. So in such case, we're lowering the threshold in participation on, on NFT production. Uh, we set up op uh, and optimize the, the module spot for the artist. We are trying to give a kind of a customized shop for each artist to, to be on our, uh, our platform. And one of the example is Chen Huan Ren. His name is Chen Jing. He's one of the top hip hop uh, artists from Hong Kong. Uh, influencer and also um, and also musician uh, singer, which which is our he is our friend and he also had participated in our platform, uh, sending and minting his NFTs. So he is also have customized shop for any of his NFTs, which is a cool thing. Establishment of membership system. So in future we are willing to to have. Uh, graduated membership system, which you can see on more and centralized platform, we're gonna have it in, as well. So different uh, users with different trading volume can have different fees on uh, on Treasure Land, and there will be additional bonuses, which we are designing right now for our users. Protection and awareness against fake NFTs and scams. Um, this is a pain point right now, and. Um, for many markets, uh, we're struggling right now against standing against scammers, which basically uh, copying NFTs from one chain to another chain. So um, we manually verify each a collection or NFT. Uh, we're proving that this NFT is original and from original uh, project or original uh, artist or creator. So in such case, uh, we want to aware and protect our uh, users against uh, scams which is mm, which is flawed in the market and uh, marketplaces right now and in such case if you go to nf uh, to treasure land you can see the blue icon a blue tag which showing that uh, this nft is already ver verified uh, we uh, we advise to participate only in obtaining verified nfts Please do not participate in NFTs, which is not verified yet by our team. So um, additional thing, what I would like to say that uh, something about what we have done in the past with kind of activities. In the past, we participated with more than 200 projects and, and uh, artists on uh, Treasure Land. And this all happened in the last past half year. Uh, we are pretty young and uh, ambitious uh, trading platform, um, marketplace for NFTs. And um, uh, you can see that we, the, one of the, our first launches was, was uh, physical golden ox enchanting sneakers, which have been trading for uh, 15 Ethereum. At that time it was about a bit less than $30,000, which is, was pretty good in, in the springtime. And um, one of our biggest events, it was for AV superstar Hatana Yi blind box. Uh, basically, she's a big influencer in Asia, and many people watching her videos. Uh, like, is not advised to watch her videos, but who likes who watch uh, videos for people older than 21 or 18 years old. And she sold 3,000 pieces of her NFTs in five minutes, and she gathered more than one about 1.6 million US dollars on, on in that price and it was like more than 600 BNBs. Uh, so um, 
yeah, event was really big. Our our website was lagging that time with many people participating in this event. So after that, we had a, a stable volume of users, which is growing consist consistently, and we over overcome some um, some projects and some uh, NFT trading platforms which have been in the market uh, longer than us. So in such case, we can you can see a good dynamic in our user growth. Um, later, I will show it. And this, uh, I'll be a little bit, a couple of words about um, different uh, participants, different IPs can participate in our uh, NFT marketplace activities, and we can help them to do PR. But first of all, we need to be sure that they are real, they are not fake. And we need to be sure that they are good influencers and they have user base by themselves so they can benefit our platform as well. Uh, we also have a return in fees, um, uh, we return in fees uh, program. So if you're trading volume more than 10 Ethereum, we'll return part of the fees to our, uh, to our um, kind of creators. <clears throat> and um, so um, yeah, all these outstanding performances attract some, some uh, um, you know, attention from top uh, influencers in the market, like Point Market Cap, doing did repost in our tweets, uh, Deb.com, BSC Chain, when one one of the the hottest projects on BSC Chain and our main volume on BSC. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we do not want to to increase our volume on the other chains like Polygon in and um, and Ethereum as well. Uh, which we are actively doing right now and, and trying to find more projects uh, like the best projects on Polygon right now, searching for more projects on other chains. In such case, we can add more chains in the future on, in our platform. So one of the biggest events, this is the biggest event have been done on, on Treasureland. It was uh, launching of NFT of Maya Musk, which is mother of Elon Musk. She has been launching NFT together with Radio Kaka, which is one of the biggest volumes uh, projects right now in our platform. And uh, she has been done uh, live stream together with CZ. And um, it was pretty good. She launched one auction uh, NFT, which is what was sold for 9,800 BNB and uh, pretty significant uh, big volume brought to, to our um, to our and attention from another users to our platform. So uh, it was roughly about 4,900,000 um, uh, volume sold uh, of uh, US dollars sold this NFT. And uh, we are planning to have our next activity, which we're really th thrilled to announce right now, which will be done in the end of October. It will be Treasure Land Blind Box. Uh, and this event, going to be uh, done uh, on our platform and it will be more details i think is better you will know from our twitter so you need to be subscribed on our twitter and to find out more details or, or maybe our telegram or other media so uh, this is um, our media and all our links where you can find all details and you can send also our email to us where you can follow us on instagram or twitter or discord and um, I would like to share and show our, our platform, our website right now. And here we go. This is our website. Oh, sorry. Uh, here it is. This is our web website. And uh, very cool feature, uh, by the way. Um, if you press on MetaMask and you switch between different networks, like for example, Ethereum, uh, the network is automatically switching in their, in their website as well. So uh, you can choose Polygon as well, or you can choose um, uh, Binance, uh, Binance Smart Chain. It's switching immediately. So uh, on the top, you can see different things. And um, I um, advise to press this button and press into the docs. So guys, if you go to the docs, you can see that the all details about loyalties, about how to trade, how to sell, how to buy NFTs, what is NFTs, introductions, endpoints. You can find APIs and everything. And uh, you can uh, you, here is a knowledge base here in our glossary. 
So everything what you need to know about trading NFTs on Treasure Land and how to do that and what kind of fees you're going to pay, you can find on in our uh, docs tab. And uh, additional thing, what we have is rankings. So here you can see top 88 for right now uh, projects which participate on on Treasure Land. And uh, yeah, Radio Kaka is the biggest. So Pancake is a long time in the top. Um, yeah, and Baby Swap as well. Seascape had did a good volumes, and uh, right now a bit fell down. So uh, you can find all details about our top uh, ranked uh, platforms, uh, top ranked uh, projects on, in in our platform over here, and. Um, yeah, and also you can follow uh, if you want to know more about what kind of project we're going to be listed and listing right now, you need to subscribe on our Twitter. We, we send in everything in one second. You can receive a message. Uh, you can point uh, uh, this button uh, to, to get a notification if you send a new message over here. And you can follow us on treasureland.market. And uh, here, is, here is our Twitter, at treasurelandnft. Yeah, please find us, follow over here. And uh, uh, yeah, everything what we participate in, for example, Treasureland Yoshi, so you can hear Ninja Dodge, you can see all announcements are here. Yeah. And a couple words about the data and what, uh, what kind of things it's just in the end to, to show you guys. So, um, this is this is dab.com uh, website. Let's go on the main page. So uh, we go on the DAP ranking marketplaces. And you can see the first one is Air NFT is advertisement. Number one is OpenSea, is a king of all NFT plat trading platforms. And Treasureland on BSC marketplace is number two. So you can see super rare crypto funds all, all behind. If we check uh, on uh, BSC chain, I, I picked the Binance BSC chain over here. You can see the treasure land is number one trading uh, platform on BSC chain. Uh, we are willing to be number one in any chain in the future and we wish to go there, right? Uh, basically, this is everything what I would like to share today with you about Treasureland. Please do not skip our notification on your Twitter, follow us, or you can ask any question in a, in a Telegram, or you can send us a message. Uh, thank you for watching me. This is me, Dmitri, from treasureland.market. Um, and uh, thank you for uh, Synopsis for arranging this event. Yeah, goodbye. So the first English day of Synopsis 2021 edition three has ended. So let me thank all viewers and brilliant speakers for joining us. Our special thanks to amazing Serafima Semkina for holding the most engaging panel discussion about NFTs and digital art. So I would like to mention that uh, summit organizers of blockchain consultancy Calibri Group, the cryptocurrency calendar Coindar.org, and Sinafi Group. Summit so organizers, a commission of blockchain technologies and digital economy of the all Russian public organization Investment Russia and popular YouTube channels Cryptos and Sexy BDC. Our diamond sponsors are Algorand and Arpa Chain. Our gold sponsors are Gazer, Bella Protocol, CPI Technologies, Viconomy, and Veracity. Our key partners are Exmo. Theta Network and Theta TV, Freeton and Ton Labs, Dalio, Blockster, Fear.io, Astar, DigiDAO, DAO.vc, Bing Crypto, Bing Bond, J2TX, Trustbase, Gate.io, and of course, Binance. Synopsis 2021 has opened the interactive zone under the synergies section at Coindar.org, so where cryptocurrency projects hold contents and quizzes. Uh, so visit coindar.org and join them. It's easy, guys. <laughs> Just go and do it. The reprise is waiting for you, by the way. So tomorrow will be another amazing day at Synopsis 2021. Uh, I'm Maxim Suhanosik. See you tomorrow.
This planet is at a tipping point. The headlines seem to agree. In fact, it might be the only thing we can agree on. We seem to be caught in the same old pattern of booms and busts, haves and have-nots. Pushed to the brink by COVID-19, we find ourselves more divided than ever. And despite staggering sums of money being printed, many continue to struggle. We simply can't afford to wait for the pattern to repeat itself. Today, people are choosing open platforms powered by blockchains, ensuring money flows through the hands of everyday people. Institutional investors are getting engaged. A new Bitcoin. wave of global institutions are investing in Bitcoin and blockchain technology, while demand for cryptocurrencies has reached historic heights, forever changing the way we give to the causes we care about and how we exchange, earn, and spend. The future is decentralized. The world is moving forward. We're building new systems to increase the freedom of money for everyone. But it'll take all of us, working together, to push past the tipping point. We have a Binance Smart Chain that's finally released a $100 million fund for the Binance Smart Chain ecosystem community. I, I think that Bitcoin is the solution to 7.8 billion people's problems. They just don't know it yet. We can watch the world change, or we can change the world. We help fund, build, and localize tech startups in the world's most promising regions. Cinefy is a one-stop solution for tech companies trying to make sense of China and Southeast Asia. Check out more at cinefy.group. Welcome to the Theta Network. Earn T-Fuel crypto rewards simply by watching live streams and videos. As you watch and share with others, you're contributing to the decentralized Theta Network, all powered by Theta's native blockchain. 
Discover the future of video delivery at thetanetwork.org.